getting ready for the coin toss this evening as the Seminole captains, including Darrell Bush, the senior linebacker, come out for the toss of the coin against Chad Melita and Thomas and the Duke Blue Devils. And, you know, a moment ago, Keith, you talked about the emotional practices as you see Duke take the field here at Wallace Wade Stadium. The emotional practices, the high-tempo practices that Florida State had this week. Without a doubt, especially on the defensive side of the ball, Coach Mickey Andrews, defensive coordinator for Florida State, really had his troops going after themselves, as it were. Fundamental drills, a lot of tackling, a lot of hitting, as you see Florida State arriving here, Wallace Wade Stadium, because they've got to get better against themselves, as it were, tonight, Mike. Duke outmanned, could pull an upset, but not likely. Florida State needs to stay focused in order to try to continue their improvement as they make their way through the rest of the season. Well, Florida State won the toss. They declined and they will kick it off and so the Duke Blue Devils will go on the offense first and this is a Duke team that has lost 11 straight games in the ACC and a Duke team that is young and inexperienced offensively and guys like Daryl Bush will try to really hammer at their inexperience this evening. And talking with the coaching staff of Florida State, Daryl Bush in playing all four previous games, 16 quarters, Mike, they estimate he's only been healthy about one and a half of those quarters. In fact, he's nursing a very sore hamstring. You see him stretching it out there. The left wheel is a little bit damaged. It'll be interesting to see how much actual playing time he gets tonight. Yeah, Daryl Bush, the senior, has had a fine senior year, and obviously he is happy to have Sam Coward back on his side as the Seminoles' defense is tops in the nation, allowing just under 187 yards per game, and the amazing thing is how few rushing yards their opponents are getting this season. The counterpart to that man is Chiki Abunawe, a guy who the Duke coaching staff says is a pretty good one in the ACC. Played uh, in the shadow, as it were, of Billy Granville the last two years, the uh, linebacker from Duke that's now with the Cincinnati Bengals. He's number one in the ACC as Abunawe. 78 tackles coming into tonight's contest. 6'2", 230 pounds, and just a sophomore. The head coach in his 22nd season, Bobby Bowden, as we mentioned, yeah, could be buddy. the sixth time in his career that the Seminoles have opened the year 5-0. and oh. Certainly the prognosticators think that will happen this evening. Janikowski getting set to get this game underway. Hello, everybody. Number 38, Sebastian Janikowski back deep to receive. Dwayne Epperson, number 33, and Scotty Montgomery, number two for Duke. The left foot is underneath the ball, and we are underway here at Duke. Football taken at the seven yard line by Montgomery. He has a hole. He's up past the 30, all the way near the 35 yard line. The stop made by Derek Gibson of the Seminoles. Montgomery, the fastest of the wide receivers, being utilized on kickoff returns. Nice seam. Broke it right up. Duke's great field position as they come out of the blocks. Now you talked about the quarterback, Bobby Campbell. You will see the brace. As he is starting again after starting the first two weeks of the season. Back in healthy. Rashid and Wilkes in the backfield. Wilkes the speedy tailback. Campbell on the quick hit. They slam it across to the speedy Montgomery. And Montgomery is brought down by Samari Roll. Now the backs and receivers for the Duke Blue Devils will feature the man we just saw, the speedster, Scott Montgomery. They're not afraid to go to the tight end, Jeff Hodrick. Probably a good all-ACC candidate, at least preseason, probably will win that award at the end of the year. There you see their offensive line, all five returning starters. They are a little bit light, they're not big, but they are all experienced. A gain of six on first down brings up a second and four from the 38-yard line of the Blue Devils. In motion comes Thomas to the near side. And that's where they go. And he is hit immediately. Near the first down, hit by Dexter Jackson. Duke coming out early with their quick hitting three-step drops against this Florida State defense. There you see the down four and the three linebackers, Cowart, Bush, and Green. Keep your eye on 96, Larry Smith. The coaching staff says he's been the best and most pleasant surprise of this early season for Florida State. And because of the speed the backfield of the Seminoles has not been tested much, but Tate Cody, Shevin Smith, and Samari Roll, Dexter Jackson, ready to try to go against the test tonight. 
Injured man on the field. It is Corey Thomas, the man who just made the reception and was sandwiched by about three seminal players. Corey Thomas is a senior from Wilson, North Carolina. He's their stud receiver, and he looks just fine. Very durable. Played in 39 ball games. He's got passes in 37 of them coming into tonight's contest. They're beautiful, to say the least, Saturday evening here in Northern North Carolina in Durham. ACC football, Florida State and Duke from the shotgun. And Bush was back quickly to make the play on Latavius Wilkes. Florida State coming with pressure that time. This Bush actually coming on a stunt on the inside run right into that delayed handoff. Very dominating Florida State defense so far through four games, Mike. 20 yards against rushing. And the, the minus 33 last year by the Kings is, is just astounding as it was a loss of one on first down. Brings up a second and 11. Opening possession of the contest. Montgomery to the right side. The quick hit again goes incomplete. And a flag is down as Jackson ran into Scotty Montgomery. And again, for the third time on this drive, we've seen uh, Duke coming with a three-step drop, a quick drop to a motion man, trying to disrupt that coverage. And be 10 yards and an automatic first down. Watch the pressure up at the top. You'll see the motion man come through. Jackson just a little quick, trying to break on the ball. Now the Duke coaching staff has said they are going to try to use the three and five step drop and try to get those quick hit slants to try to kind of counter the speed of the front seven of the Seminoles. Those tight plays here. So they get the first down, the football now at the 48 yard line. Montgomery and Rashid in the backfield. There goes Montgomery in motion again. Campbell under pressure from Bush. He completes the pass for about six yards, and Montgomery slips out of bounds. And there again, you see the chess game going on here with the defensive coaching staff of Florida State, the offensive coaching staff of Duke. Again, going with motion, going with a three and a five step drop. Florida State coming with pressure, and can you execute? Can you execute with the quarterback getting the ball to the receiver, or can you execute as a defensive back or safety on closing quickly, batting the ball away or intercepting? So they give them eight, and it brings up a second and two. Duke trying to move the football on the play action. A flag is down. Wilkes would be close to the first down, but will await the call as Sam Cowart makes the stop. With help from Lamont Green. Wilkes an exciting running back from that backfield position. is just a sophomore, 5'10", 185 pounds. Number one on the team in rushing. Has 194, almost 200 yards coming in. Well, it's going to be offsides called against Florida State. So a couple of penalties as Robin Wood makes the call. One first down, and Duke is moving the football into Florida State territory. Florida State averaging nine penalties a game, Mike. They only had four last week against Miami, a marked improvement. But here we've seen two on this drive alone. Campbell perfect so far, three for three for 18 yards on this opening drive of the evening. Seminoles with everybody up at the line. Blitz is on. Campbell goes down, and it'll be touched. And it'll be reported as a sack, but I couldn't tell if he slipped on the turf. Uh, I was afraid he might have buckled that right knee, but he gets up and looks just fine. Obviously, you can see right there at the bottom of the on that right knee. A lot of times when they're coming out of there, the quarterbacks. They can get stepped on by one of their offensive linemen. Let's we'll see if we get a look here. Florida State coming with pressure. Seems to just uh, lose his footing there. Florida State right on top of him. Actually trips over his fullback. He gets tangled up with Dawood Rashid, and down he goes. Excellent camera work, guys. Thank you. So it goes as a loss of five. Brings up a second and 15. And Rashid with the game. Back inside the markers, Dexter Jackson in the defensive backfield makes the play. Rashid, a powerful runner, but you'll notice that these fullbacks on the Duke team are, in the description of their coaching staff, truly fullbacks. Without a doubt, Rashid comes in at uh, uh, 230 pounds. You see his numbers on the gear. He does get a number of carries, unlike the Florida State fullbacks, 
but they are very much power inside runners, uh, and they don't catch very many passes out of the backfield. Neither of their fullbacks has a reception. Three wide receivers now, two to the left side. Ben Erdelak in the game on the right. Campbell, under pressure, scrambles. And he'll be about four yards shy of the first down. And gingerly getting up with that right leg. Troy Saunders moving in and making the stop. So Duke will be forced to try a long field goal, it looks. And they have got a kid, Sims Lenyart, who has been very good. Lenhart has only missed one field goal on the season. And there's some confusion, and Duke will take a timeout. They would love to have the momentum of getting some points on the board early. We are scoreless. Sims Lenhart would like to change that. The sophomore from Charleston, South Carolina, the top kicker in the ACC, has hit his last five. He has made everything that he has tried this year including a career-long 50-yarder last week against the Maryland Terrapins. The Terrapins defeating the Duke Blue Devils in that game, 16-10. There you see Len Hart's numbers. This spot, Mike, will be about a 52, maybe 51 officially. He's got plenty of leg strength. He's worked on it diligently in the offseason. Lenhardt trying for a new career long. He about 52 yards. And that kick is just short. So Duke comes away empty. And Lenhardt misses the first after making his last five. But if your offensive coordinator, Larry Beckus, you've got to be happy with one thing as you see a dejected Lenhart there. They've run four minutes and 32 seconds off of the clock, and that's the second key that the coaching staff at Duke said. They want to maintain ball control and keep the ball out of the hands of this Florida State offense every chance they get. Thad Busby, the senior, coming off a strong three-quarters of performance last week against the Hurricanes. Under center for the first offensive play from scrimmage for the Knowles. All kinds of time. Going deep. Looking for Warwick. And he overthrows him. Well, you could see the speed of Peter Warwick as he kind of accelerated past Karambi Settles and his teammate. Florida State coming out just like Maryland did last year and going uh, last week. Maryland scored on their first play. Florida State trying to. Now Peter Warwick Tops on the team, averaging over 100 yards per game in receptions. Pearsall is the tight end, and Feaster at least gets the started tailback. They'll rotate in minor, they'll rotate in four, but Feaster does get the nod. An offensive line. Eric Thomas starting ahead of the injured Donald Heaven. Play action. Flag is down. Warwick makes the completion, gets the catch inside Duke territory at the 44-yard line. Lamar Grant forced him out of bounds. You've got to think that's in the uh, offensive holding arena, and that's the preliminary sign from the official. There you see our referee, Robin Wood, talking with the Dunaway. Talked about Chiki Abunaway of the Duke Blue Devils as the Seminoles called for the penalty again. He's the highlighted man, at least in the linebacking court. Chris Combs, the sophomore. A man to look for tonight, number 93, and Tawambi Settles and Darius Clark are the elder statesmen in the back. A bad snap. Football's on the ground. Duke's got it. Chris Combs. And there is a flag on the field. And they're going to give the football to Duke. It's a holding against Florida State. Declined. And Duke has wonderful field position. We mentioned from the outset that Florida State had to be conscious and be conscientious about working on themselves, not making mistakes and proving what they needed to do. 
turnovers are one way to lose a ball game. You see the direct snap to Dee Feaster. It's high. Kevin Long's snap is high. Feaster cannot control it. And Chris Combs, number 93, is right there to pounce on it. This is how you get beat when you're playing away and you're heavily favored. Well, Chris Combs, who had eight sacks last year as a freshman, a big fumble recovery here. Duke has got the football on the Florida State 19. From the shotgun, Campbell rolling right, looking towards the end zone. Montgomery's got it. He's out of bounds at the two. Tate Cody was there. 16-yard game for the Blue Devils. Cody, the freshman on Montgomery, the sophomore. They'll see each other for the next couple of years at least. Campbell showing some surprising mobility, rolling out to his right, able to deliver that pass right on task. Duke good to go on the one-yard line. First and goal for the Blue Devils. Double back set. Campbell with the football, touchdown! Duke is on the board. Campbell with his first touchdown pass of 97. Excuse me, first run of 97, third touchdown rushing. Lenhard on for the PAT. Duke leads seven to nothing. What a fake by Billy Campbell, or Bobby Campbell, pardon me. As he faked, like he was going to pitch it right, kept it himself, and dove over the top. So the Blue Devils take advantage of the Florida State turnover, and they have the early lead. Duke fans are excited. They lead 7 to nothing. Let's go downstairs, check in with the third man on our crew, Tom Block. Tom? Hey, Mike, I tell you what, Florida State's got the garnet pants on tonight. They're 10-0 all time in these garnet pants, but you never know it with the way Duke has started this ball game, already putting Florida State on the ropes with that early touchdown. Mike? Well, thank you, Tom, and the Florida State Seminoles have never lost to the Duke Blue Devils. In fact, they have absolutely dominated this team in their five victories over Duke. They have had an average victory margin of 37 points. Campbell with the option play for the two-yard touchdown run after the fumble recovered by Chris Combs and Duke is on the board. Campbell perfect on the night. Four for four, 37 yards in the air. Stringer and Coles back deep to return for Florida State. It is taken by Coles and he has met at the 19-yard line and hit hard. Devin Pierce makes the special teams play, the freshman from Boca Raton. Now take another look at Thad Busby as he comes onto the field. And the head coach, Bobby Bowden, probably telling his guys, all right, we're here. We know that we're coming off an emotional victory. Now let's play some football. As Duke has come out and taken the early momentum in this football game. Well, Busby will work from the shotgun. Feaster next to him. Knocked down by Combs. It'll go incomplete. Another fine play by the sophomore, Chris Combs. In talking with the Florida State coaching staff, specifically offensive coordinator Mark Rick, he said the one guy on that side of the ball, other than number 54, Chike, was number 93, Chris, Chris Combs. 6'6", 270 pounds, started most of the year as a freshman, now a sophomore. They give to Feaster. He's got a lot of room. Moves out ahead of the 30. Breaks the tackle, and finally dragged down at the 39-yard line. There is a flag on the field. He was stopped by Brian Krenzel. So a good gainer for Feaster will come back. 
That has got to be maybe five penalties against Florida State already. Have it exceeded last year. Look at the right-hand side. You'll see the takedown block there on the right-hand side. I believe that's Jason Whitaker, number 68. Obviously, in the college game, unlike the pros, Mike, they don't call the numbers, but we still have the replays. Absolutely. And better yet, on Sunday night and all day Monday, the coaches have the film. <laughs> and that's the dangerous thing. So it brings up a second and 16. Ball on the 13-yard line. Deep inside Florida State territory. Busby gives it to Feaster again. He works around the left side. Outruns two Duke players. But getting a piece of him was Brian Krenzel. And he drags him down. Florida State penalty is a problem early. Let's check in with Tom. Yeah, you're right, Mike. And, you know, you look last week against uh, Miami. Florida State only had four penalties the whole game, which was their lowest total in about two years. Big East officials last week since Miami was in Tallahassee. Now FSU's back to the ACC reps, and the flags are flying on them early. Third down and 11. Busby, time. It'll be well short of the first down yardage. Tawambi Settles was right in the doorstep of Damian Harrell. Settles moved from a free safety position at the end of last year, now playing full-time at corner, 6'3", 195 pounds, a senior. Harrell just didn't get enough on his route. Settles right there to make the contact. So Keith Cottrell will be forced to punt for the first time tonight. And Ben Erdelak back to receive for Duke. Kick taken at the 29, a man in his face. He eludes one man. And now three Seminoles bring him down at the 35, a return of six after a 45-yard punt. Well, Vernius Coles on Erdelak. Well, if you're Duke, you wanted to come out. Get some emotion on your side. Have a good start. Capitalize on a turnover. Maybe you didn't plan on, but you did it anyway. Couldn't script it better for Coach Goldsmith, Fred Goldsmith, and his offensive coordinator. So Wilkes and Rashid in the backfield next to Bobby Campbell from the shotgun. They give it to Wilkes, and he is hit immediately. Well, as it is any week, as Larry Smith and Greg Spires make the play, Florida State's advantage with speed defensively is something that just had the Duke Blue Devils and their defensive coordinator, Bob Trott, petrified. Florida State a little thin with some suspensions and folks uh, exiting early for the NFL, a la Bowlware. But this group, very, very talented, and the Duke coaching staff very aware of their athleticism. So a loss of three on first down. They'll try to run the football again. This time it's Rashid. He'll get three, maybe four. Still short of the initial line of scrimmage. Darrell Bush with his first tackle of the night. Rashid averaged 5.2 yards per carry last year as the fullback uh, for the starting fullback for 11 games, Mike. And a little under that this year at four yards, but I think you can see in the earlier drive and there, he's got plenty of power, and when he gets in the open, he can move. A passing situation here on third and 11. Oh, my goodness. Campbell tried to boot it away, kicked it straight in the air. It does take a favorable Duke bounce. And down at the 50-yard line. John Gordon was the man who caught up to the football. Comes out as a 14-yard kick. Nothing fancy. You used to see it all the time. Just a quick kick on third down, hoping to catch Florida State unawares and hoping to get what you want there, Mike, is a line drive. That time, Bobby kicked it straight up. But you want to get the ball down on the ground and have it roll and hop because obviously the defensive people have nobody back there. Coach Fred Goldsmith, a little wondering about that play, but certainly indicative of pulling out all the stops. You see there in his fifth year here at Duke, had an outstanding year in 94. There's another flag on first down for the Seminoles. Movement on the line of scrimmage. Yeah. 
once again against Florida State. Florida State very shaky here, Mike, in the early going. 6.32 left here in the first quarter. Mental mistakes. Doesn't matter if your opponent is Miami, Florida, Duke, or Florida A&M. Does not matter. That is something that will bother a coach at any level of any sport. Busby now works at first and 15 from his own 45. Feaster up the middle. And brought down after a gain of about three. Ryan Stallmeyer, the sophomore, makes the stop. He was basically a special teams player one year ago, but Stallmeyer's a good one. And one that Bob Trott likes. Had 17 tackles last week against Maryland in a sack. Number 44, 6'1", 220 pounds. He's also a sophomore. He and number 54, Abunaway, anchor the interior of that 3-4 Duke defense. We call him a rising star. A gain of two, second and 13. High formation. Budsby to the near side. Warwick complete. He's met immediately. He'll be short of the first down yardage as Lamar Grant, a former Super Prep All-American, is right on Peter Warwick. Get a good look at why people are high on Peter Warwick. With these pressing defenses, Mike, you've got to get off the ball quick, and then you've got to get separation. With his acceleration out of the break, he's able to get it. Busby right on with the ball. Good protection up front, bad steps and throws. But Grant is just a sophomore right there to meet the challenge. Myron Jackson in at tight end. From the eye, Fudsby. Gets it ahead, complete first down and more. Brought down at the 30-yard line, Melvin Pearsall with the reception, a gain of 13 yards for Florida State. Pearsall indicative of the re-emergence of the tight end at Florida State. A little bit of a lost position over the last couple of three years, but so far in 97, Pearsall with his 14th reception of the year. Tight ends being much more effectively utilized by this uh, Florida State offense in 97. He's just shy of his career high for receptions in a season, and that will add one on. Budsby again, the quick hit, E.G. Green, and Settles wraps him up, a gain of nine yards on the play. And Florida State moving the football very well, now down near the Duke 20. Green adds to his already current Florida State record. That's his 32nd consecutive game with at least one catch. We've got to watch the yardage game by E.G. Green tonight because he can move up on the all-time list, especially will watch his receptions very closely. Got a chance to move up to the third position all-time in Florida State history with a big night. The pitch. Wheeling through a couple of defenders and down to the 12-yard line, Khalid Abdullah. Part of me, Davey Ford, the ball carrier that time, the tailback. You'll see all three and possibly four of the Florida State tailbacks. There you see Ford, the freshman, 5'11", 188 pounds, just a little over 100 yards coming into the night's contest for the season. But between Feaster Ford, Miner, and Venez Gooch, Florida State will rotate all four of those guys in and out in different situations. Feaster, Ford, or Fannin? A look from the quarterback position. They give it to Davey Ford again. He wheels and deals, makes a couple of cuts, and he's stopped about four yards into the Duke defensive unit. Ford finally beginning to feel his way around and get settled into this Florida State offense. He had 69 yards last week against Miami on 14 carries. Again, just a true freshman. 5.8 yards per carry average. He's got the great speed, Keith, and was the fastest high school player in the state of Florida last year. And you can see it the way he jukes and cuts in tight quarters. Ford. There's the tailback again behind Abdullah. Ford with room. Touchdown Seminoles. What a great block by the fullback in front of Davey Ford. A 13-yard touchdown run. And the Seminoles with an opportunity to tie the football game. Great example of the explosiveness and acceleration and then capped by the speed of Davey Ford. Gaping hole there, as you mentioned, Abdullah with a great block. Florida State converts. 
Janikowski the point after. And this football game is tied at seven. An impressive drive by the Seminoles capped off by the 10-yard touchdown run by Davey Ford, the former USA Today Offensive Player of the Year, now property of the Florida State Seminoles. We're tied. Well, there's a happy freshman, Davey Ford, as Keith mentioned, starting to get comfortable in the lineup. The 10-yard touchdown run for Ford. Let's check downstairs with Tom Black. Thanks, Mike. You know, the story with Davey Ford, when he came in, he came in with Travis Minor. Minor was much more highly regarded because he played at Baton Rouge Catholic, which was Warwick Dunn's high school. Well, Minor got hurt in the preseason, had a sprained ankle, missed a lot of contact drills. That allowed Davey Ford to work his way up the ranks, and uh, now you'll see both Ford and Minor. But that's why Davey Ford has been running his second team most of this year. Mike? Now, he was impressive running it on that last six-play drive, going nearly 50 yards in under three minutes of time. Montgomery backing way up on a fine kick and through the end of the end zone. Now, Davey Ford is a guy that has truly impressed the coaching staff of the Seminoles, and that man, Bobby Bowden. Very much so, and he just scored his first rushing touchdown as a Seminole. As you mentioned, he has that great speed. One of the things in talking with Mark Rick that they're most concerned about, Davey, is that when he gets to the line of scrimmage, he gets to the point of attack, he's taken just a little bit too long to make his decision which way to go. And, of course, Mark conceded that that only comes with reps and with experience. And he got a few of those last week with nearly 70 yards on the ground against the Hurricanes. So from the 20-yard line, Epperson and Lay Marshall in the backfield now for Duke. Lots of room for Campbell. Campbell hit. And the forward motion takes him nearly to the 40-yard line. 19-yard carry as finally Shevin Smith brings down the quarterback Bobby Campbell. So for a guy with a knee brace, he's showing great mobility. He better put one on his other leg. Let's get them both raced up, showing some great mobility. As you mentioned, a gaping hole with Florida State rushing upfield too fast. Scotty Montgomery getting down with a nice block on Jackson, frees him up for another four or five, and the quarterback rushing attack taking his toll so far here in the first quarter. Now Campbell nearly 60 yards of offense on his own, and he'll try to add to it, but this time he will get very little, if any at all. Campbell again on the carry. Campbell again on the carry. That one, not by decision, or was by decision, not by design. As Florida State's defensive backfield had all of his receivers covered. But already he is averaging five yards per carry, including the touchdown. Campbell with only 57 yards rushing coming in. There you see Goldsmith stressing that we got to keep that from happening. That's the way you get your quarterback killed. So a second and ten. Campbell with heavy pressure on him, throws the football away. And it's kicked out of bounds. That was not a forward pass, Mike. I think the officials are going to rule it a lateral. You see him conferring there on the side. When the ball hit the ground, no, but none of the zebras blew their whistle. Now they're going to overrule it and call it a pass. But at the time that it was happening, as you as they noticed there, Florida State was trying to get on that ball and actually fumbled it back out of bounds. Well, they certainly were. Well, Tony Bryant got a great jump from the line, and he was right in Campbell's face. It's interesting to note at this point in the game, the Seminoles, the number one defense in the nation, are allowing their opponents just about 20 yards rushing per game. And already Campbell, the quarterback, with the brace on his right side, has gained 20 yards against Florida State. Duke, one for three on third down conversions. And with the mishap at the line of scrimmage, that will not help their cause. Multiple flags on the football field. It looks like Campbell took a little shot to the ribs, but he'll be fine. Robin Woods, microphone on the field. Ineffective so far this evening. We apologize for that, but we will keep you posted of the penalties. Well, the comparisons between these two teams, Duke and Florida State, especially in the ACC rankings, the margin is wide, Keith. 
It is. Remember and recall that there are only nine teams in the ACC. So Duke at the very bottom in total defense and rush defense and just a couple of notches up on scoring. Florida State with the ones. Now you see the train staff working on Campbell. Looks like they're doing something with his left shoulder. He's taken a couple of shots early on on those rushes and a couple of pressures. Injured quarterbacks, the theme that you talked about at the top of the show. Take us through what has happened really since last year's game against Florida State in the Duke quarterback situation. The starter last year was David Green, who started against Florida State in Doak Campbell Stadium, was injured on the third or fourth play of the game, missed the entire year. He comes in the spring ball and uh, regains his position, so to speak, but then they come into the fall camp and everything's back up again. Green gets hurt. Campbell comes in, wins the position, starts the first two games. He gets hurt. Spencer Romine, who we will not probably see tonight, comes in, starts three games. He gets hurt last week against Maryland. Now we see Campbell, and now we're down to Thompson, their number four quarterback coming into preseason camp. Well, it didn't look like it was a serious injury to Campbell, and certainly Duke hopes that's the case. And the word to describe, now well, that's never a good sign when the pads come off as they're checking the left shoulder of quarterback Bobby Campbell. And Thompson, number four on the depth chart at the start of the year, now playing against the number four ranked team in the nation. And he hands the football off. Dwayne Epperson hit by Darrell Bush and stopped after a short gain, and Duke will be forced to punt. Now, starting to talk about the quarterback situation, I mean, Larry Beckish, when we asked him yesterday, Keith, how is the quarterback situation? Without hesitation, he said one word, ugly. And uh, anytime you've got your coaching staff describing things that way, you see Sit Campbell moving off. Uh, they are very, very concerned, obviously so, with who's going to take those snaps. Morton to punt, Feaster at the 22-yard line. A Duke player went down. And there's a flag on the field. Feaster returns it to the 35, a 35-yard kick. But I think the flag's going to be against the Seminoles as the main pursuing player for Duke was kind of clipped up shy to getting towards D. Feaster. Yep. Looked like it was an inadvertent hit, Keith, but nonetheless, It'll move the Seminoles back 15. And that'll be Florida State's fifth or sixth penalty. And as Tom brought us up to speed earlier, only four penalties last week. They've already doubled that or near doubling that in tonight's contest. Already 40 yards plus being backed off via the yellow flag against the Seminoles this evening. But it didn't hurt them last time as they marched the football right down the field, taking advantage of the poor punt attempt by Campbell. Ford and Glenn in the backfield for the Knolls. They pitch it. Davy Ford bounce off the would-be tackle. Now he's got room on the left side. Watch the speed. Trying to work around the outside, and Lamar Grant able to make a shoestring tackle, a gain of 19 yards on the play. Holmes had a chance early. He bounced off him, did Davy Ford, and then he moved out to the left side for a big gain. Now on the play sheet, Mike, this play goes right. But there's nothing there. Duke doing a good job of getting at the point of attack. Ford breaks a little arm tackle there, carries it all the way back to the left. Lamar Grant does a good job of getting off the would-be blocker and then, as you mentioned, making that shoestring tackle 19 yards later. Averaging over 10 yards a carry. So from the 40. Again, it's Davey Ford with room to work. Spins near the first down, and he leans for a gain of 12 and another Florida State first down. Settles and Stallmeyer finally bring him down. We're seeing a little bit of durability and stability there by Davey Ford. Here's an ISO on him. Let's see. He drops that left foot back, gets started, wraps the balls up, ball up, runs through one arm tackle, then another, then another, then puts his head down and picks up two or three more. Good hard nose running on that isolation action right up the middle. Florida is a bigger and stronger team than Duke. Travis Miner now in the game. Busby to pass. Over to the near side in Warwick. And Grant was there. Lamar Grant, the sophomore, a busy man. And they, it was funny, we were talking to some of the Duke coaches about the stat that has kept tackles. So that's a bad stat, defensive coach, Bob Trotter. That's a horrible stat because 
A lot of times when your defensive backfield players are the guys with the most tackles, that's a bad thing. You see Grant there and he's back pedal and then Warwick just beats him out of the cut. Gets his separation. Busby accurate with his pass. He's a guy is uh, Warwick that you've got to give some room to. Movement again on the line, Keith. This all goes down, in my estimation, like the focus. Florida State obviously not focused on this ball game from the outset. You see big uh, Ross Brannon, the freshman, guilty of this being a little premature. But what a prospect here. 6'8", 280 pounds, and just a freshman. He's a fighter. Mark Rick calls him a potential superstar. The blitz is on. A football given to Travis Minor. He breaks the tackle and gets all the way down to the 25-yard line. Gannon Shepard finally hauled him down from behind to gain a 15 yards. So Duke brought everybody, but Florida State's running back, Travis Minor, was able to get through the pursuit very quickly and easily. Our first look at Minor tonight, the third Florida State tailback, only 38 yards coming in tonight. As mentioned, highly touted, injured in spring, just now getting his feet back under him. He's the man Tom talked about from the same high school as Tampa Bay Buccaneer, Florida State's most prolific runner, Warwick Dunn. So Miner's got a couple of ball carriers. Ford has had a good first quarter, but Duke is keeping themselves in this football game. We are tied at seven after the first. Welcome back, 7-7, as we start the second quarter. Florida State driving for the lead. FSU's offensive line averages a weight of 50 pounds more than the Duke defensive front, so we'll see if that takes its toll as this game wears on with that big seminal line. Well, they've certainly opened some gaping holes for Davey Ford, Dee Feaster, and the man who ran the football that time, Travis Miner. Well, Miner, obviously, number 23 in a seminal uniform now, but he did wear number 28 in high school, and I guess he had the... I don't know if the guts is the right word, Keith, but he had the confidence in himself to wear the same high school jersey number as one of his idols, obviously, growing up Warwick Dunn. Well, I think, uh, candidly, if Travis would be so, uh, he would tell you he didn't want to wear 28. He wanted to establish himself as number 23, still paying attention to his mentor and the one that preceded him, but uh, forming his own identity. Absolutely. Busby, all kinds of time. No pressure at all. The good coverage downfield by the Blue Devils. Busby still on the run. My goodness. And finally hit at the 21. Back to about the initial line of scrimmage by Darius Clark and Columbia Settles. I don't know if we'll be able to pick it up real well. I think we'll be able to see the offensive line real well. But, folks, there are only two receivers in this pattern. You've got all five linemen back. You've got a back end, and you've got a wide receiver out or a tight end in. Watch everybody peel back. Busby knows he's got a wall right there, but there's still nobody open. Why? Only two people in the route. Duke's secondary doing a good job. That has to bring it down, try to get back to the line of scrimmage. No gain, no loss. Second and 10 from the 21. A handoff to Travis Miner. And he scoops up to the 14, a gain of six yards on the carry. So that'll bring up a third and about four yards for the first down for Florida State. Florida State only averaging 98 yards on the ground coming in per contest coming into the night. Already they're at 78 yards as you see the comparison. Busby a little off but only at 50. The big turnover which led to Duke's points. On the other side, Florida State's defense only giving up about 160 yards a game and Duke well on the way to matching that. Florida State on their last try and third down unsuccessful. They'll try again and they'll get it. Inside the 10-yard line, Travis Miner. And a first down, Seminoles. Ryan Krenzel and Ryan Stallmeyer making the stop for Duke. Coming into tonight's contest, Mike, Florida State had been in the red zone 20 yards and in 22 times. Only five touchdowns, excuse me, seven touchdowns on the run, five touchdowns by the pass. Only 12 of 22 times was Florida State successful in converting a touchdown when they get down here. Ranked number four in the nation this week. The Seminoles looking to take the lead for the first time this evening. The pitch back to Miner. He's got some blocking. 
And he's hit from behind and hauled down at the two-yard line. Meyer with two touchdowns last week against Miami. Not a lot of yards rushing, but got the two scores. You see Abdullah up there in the front. Good job at the point of tackle. The unblocked man comes through, makes the tackle, preventing the touchdown. It was a good play by Kevin Lewis. Lewis doing a good job of reading and shooting the gap. Eighth play of the drive. Second and goal from the two. Meyer spins. He stops short of the end zone. Good pursuit by the Blue Devils. And right in the middle of everything is Ryan Stallmeyer. And the strong safety, Darius Clark. Nine starters, Mike, came back from this Duke defense of last year. The same Duke defense that came in the Campbell Stadium opening game of the 96 season and held Florida State to 221 yards of total offense. This group is back. As I mentioned, nine of them returned. Led by number 44, Ryan Stallmeyer, as you see him there, and of course, uh, Chike Abunaway. They don't give up points easily. Third and goal, Minor. Did he get it? Yes, touchdown, Florida State. Minor went over the top, and the Seminoles have the lead. The Florida State Seminoles had to work for that one. As the Duke defense, experienced, but still young, as Keith mentioned. They're tough around the goal line, but nonetheless, with the point after, Florida State now leads 14-7. Sebastian Janikowski with his second PAT of the night. That drive more indicative of what we anticipated coming into the night's contest. Florida State able to mix the pass and run, keep it on the ground. Converts it, they're up by seven. So Miner has scored, Davey Ford has scored, Duke has only scored once. Florida State leading 14 to seven with 11.04 remaining in the second quarter. Duke quarterback situation ugly and it could be getting worse tonight. Tom downstairs. That's right, I was just over by the Duke bench and Bobby Campbell, they had his whole uniform off, his shirt, his pads. They tried to put a contraption of padding around his left shoulder, his not throwing shoulder, and he tried to throw, it didn't work, so he looked disgusted. He got hurt on the play, that fumble play where Daryl Bush landed on him, but it doesn't look good for Bobby Campbell. Mike? Not once they have the pads off. So Montgomery and Epperson back to, thank you, Tom. Montgomery at the three yard line. He's got some room right up the middle. Montgomery, the speed demon, into Florida State territory. Brought down from behind by Derek Gibson. A 52-yard return. This is not an unusual occurrence. Montgomery with 12 returns coming into tonight. 23 and a half yard average. You see him go right up the gut. Janikowski trying to move him one way or the other. Jackson bringing him down by the shirt collar. But watch the wedge and watch how on the right-hand side it opens up. And nobody's there to feel the lane. So excellent field position for the Blue Devils. Inside Florida State territory on first down. The football's dropped. It's fumbled. And the Seminoles have it. Possibly a poor exchange between the quarterback, Kevin Thompson, and the running back, and so it's the first Duke turnover of the night. Thompson out of Thomasville, Georgia, just north, about 30 miles north of Tallahassee. Grew up watching Florida State football. Signed with Duke a year ago, now a sophomore. Bad exchange because there's a lot of penetration there in the front. Didn't quite catch the jersey number. Rashid, it looked like Rashid was hit by Florida State's number 92, Jerry Johnson. Jerry Johnson. Yep, the sophomore out of Fort Pierce. So a big play by Jerry Johnson, and the Seminoles have the football back. Busby forced out of the pocket and brought down by Chris Combs. He had a freshman record, eight sacks last year. Combs gets his first of the night here. That's why you see they're so high on Combs. Watch his speed as Busby's trying to get the ball deep to Coles. Well covered. He has to move out of the pocket, but he's not quick enough to get away from a 6'6", 270-pound sophomore. 
That's a great play, absolutely great play. Third sack on the year, first of the night for Combs. Combs has gained 15 pounds since last season. Balkan up, playing well. Busby fakes the pitch. Now he'll move back to the right side. A good block provided. Going deep, wide open, incomplete. Davy Ford was all the way down inside the 15-yard line and could not come up with the reception. I'm going to say this in a way, hopefully, that will make sense. That was a freshman snake. Ford was wide open and he stopped. He didn't have faith that Busby could gather himself and get the ball down the field. Busby thinks he's going to continue on. Ford holds up a little bit, loses that separation. Busby overthrows him. Seminoles two for three on third down conversions. They face a third and 13 here. Glenn and Ford in the backfield. Busby, straight drop, time, delivers short of the first down. Melvin Pearsall made the reception. He was immediately pushed out of bounds by Ryan Stallmeyer. We have yet to say Abunaway's name. The name Stallmeyer has been used frequently as Florida State will be forced to punt. Busby successful in completing that pass, but not for enough yardage. Duke's secondary, good job of taking away the deeper routes. So the second punt of the night for Keith Cottrell. Erdelak back, signals for the fair catch, and brings it in at the 16, and that is where Duke will start offensively. 37-yard punt. In the third quarter, it's Clemson 7, Virginia nothing. We'll step aside, 9.42 remaining in the first half. Follow me here. First play from scrimmage, Thompson, flag is down. Still on his feet is Rashid, the former Mr. Football from the state of Alabama. And I believe that flag is going to go against the Duke Blue Devils. It is for holding. Duke continuing to stay with their game plan, that quick hitting running attack and that three and five step drop even with Kevin Thompson. There you see his bio, 6'2", 205 pounds out of Thomasville. He took about 30% of the snaps this week officially as the number two quarterback and two coaches were telling us, you know, Keith, yesterday that they will do that purposefully each week that regardless of what the situation is, the number two guy will get about 30% of the snaps in practice. Well, he shows a lot of promise. He's been in the system for a year, now a sophomore. He's got a great deal of talent. Had an outstanding high school career down in Thomasville. Single back set. Thompson looking. Montgomery flag is down. A gain of about five or six on the play. Dexter Jackson was there for Florida State. Montgomery again on the quick hit, making the reception, but they'll march the Blue Devils back even further, it appears. Zebras definitely staking their ground tonight. Both sides of the ball. A bit of a lengthy discussion. And all of that means holding. And now the football spotted inside the five yard line. Well, Duke could come out with some smaller goals for tonight's game, knowing that a win was not impossible, but improbable. They wanted to score some points and minimize errors. They've already made four mistakes, and some of them coming very frequently in the last couple of minutes. Ten total penalties called already here in the first half. In short quarters, Rashid gets the football, moves up to about the seven where Coward meets him. As we talked about the opening of the show, Mike, this offensive line, Duke offensive line, are all returning starters. Manley, Friedman, Gordon, Melita, and Smithwick, all starters. They're still young with a sophomore in the group, but they have played together. Now that man, number 56, Austin Smithwick, has taken the most snaps of any offensive player on the team, and he's just a sophomore. Intercepted. 
Kept it at the nine yard line. By Tay Cody, the freshman. His second interception of his Florida State career. A critical error made by Kevin Thompson. Karate, if you want to write his name down formally, now known as Tay, a true freshman starting at that corner. This is just an errant pass by Thompson. He had two receivers and he threw in between them. Cody very alertly there to pick it off. Watch the ball coming right at you. Samari roll number two. Karate, number 27. Brings down his second interception of his short Florida State career. They're expecting great things and getting great things out of that young man. A good man, V-man coverer, and Tate Cody had the interception against Clemson. As you mentioned, Keith, and now he gets one against the Duke Blue Devils, and the football will be spotted inside the five-yard line. Well, Florida State hoping to take advantage of the second Duke turnover. You talked earlier about the fact that Florida State didn't gain a lot of yards last time these two teams met, 221, but Duke turned the football over six times, and that was eventually the difference. A 44-7 win last year in Tallahassee. Ford and Glenn, the pitch. And the Duke Blue Devil defense there again. Holmes and Shepard. And a good block a moment ago by Lamar Glenn. Watch your fullback moving outside. Does a good job of cutting. Both of the Florida State fullbacks called upon to block more than uh, run. Speaking of blocks, Tom blocks. Hey, well said, Mike. You know, the reason Lamar Glenn is in there right now, Khalid Abdul had his right ankle retaped. He looks to be all right. Matter of fact, he grabbed his helmet like he's ready to go back in, but that's the reason we're seeing more of Lamar Glenn right now as opposed to Khalid Abdul. Mike? Khalid's got to drag Lamar out. <laughs> Second and goal from the seven. The surge up the middle. They'll bring the football to about the three. Combs in the middle of it again defensively for the Blue Devils. And Davey Ford, the ball carrier for Florida State. With Florida State content of using that isolation action right up the middle. Hoping to use that weight advantage, as Tom talked about earlier, that plus 50 weight advantage across that front five. And now we've got third and about two and a half. And checking in is Myron Jackson. And a little more blocking ability up front. And the pitch to Davey Ford, the left side. Trying to use his speed, reaching towards the end zone. He did not get across the line. He'll be down at the one yard line. Good pursuit by Kevin Lewis. Coming across the field and stopping Ford just short of the touchdown. Kevin Lewis, number 27, moving from his bandit position on the play side. Does a good job of standing up the block, and then as Ford tries to reach across, the ball did cross the plane. You'll see it here, Mike, but the ball's got to be in your possession when it crosses the plane. When it fumbled out of the end zone like that, they bring it back to the last down position. Florida State fourth and about uh, two feet. Abunaway was there too, Chiki Abunaway, to help out his teammate Kevin Lewis on that last play. Fourth and goal, over the top, touchdown Florida State. So Budsby on fourth down after the costly interception gives the Seminoles their third touchdown of the night. Now when you get the ball on the five, and your Florida State, you don't come away empty very often, if at all. Fourteen point Seminole lead. More times than not, turnovers lead to points very quickly. In this case, a couple of three rushes and then your quarterback over the top. Watch Busby lay his frame out. Once that ball breaks the plane, as you saw the line judge indicate, it is a touchdown. Doesn't matter what happens after that. That a little bit of a redemptive mode, Mike. Only had 75 total yards of passing last year in the contest versus Duke. Had an outstanding game against Miami. Hoping to come back and repeat that tonight. Well, he's played against Duke in all three of his previous seasons. Florida State leads by two touchdowns. Well, I'll tell you, the Seminoles have done a good job this season cashing in on opponents' turnovers. They're at about 50% coming into tonight. They get another touchdown on a turnover there. Coming in tonight on 10 turnovers, they had scored four touchdowns and a field goal. Add to that with the one-yard run by Busby. 
Montgomery. Two yards inside his own end zone. He'll take it out. Oh, the speed again. Busby on the outside, trying to work around the kicker. He does not. A good play by Sebastian Janikowski as the speedster Montgomery with a 52-yard return. Flagged out on the play. We'll get that for you. But Montgomery doing a great job of keeping Duke in reasonable field position. I believe they'll bring this one back, as unfortunately is often the case. But Montgomery very easily showcasing his talent. Well, we were talking yesterday about Corey Thomas, their senior receiver, one of the all-time most prolific receivers in Duke history, as the holding is, you imagined, is called, Keith. And the coaches were quick to point out that while they have a great amount of admiration for Thomas, the guy they really love is this kid because of the raw speed we've seen him display. Thomas much more of a possession type of receiver with great hands. As we mentioned earlier, he started in 39 games and caught passes in 37 of them. But Montgomery can break a game open as exemplified by those two punt returns, and that's why they like to get it in his hands and let him move upfield. Nonetheless, they bring it all the way back, and Duke starts at their own 10. And they've got to call a timeout. Playcock was looking down to about two or one, and wisely, Kevin Thompson burns one of his timeouts. Now, don't forget to be sure to tune into Seminole Sports Magazine. Where it comes up Saturdays at 9.30 a.m. for a complete look at Florida State University Athletics. And Fred Goldsmith actually with a lot to say to his team right now. Corkle on the sidelines visiting with Roland Seymour, the freshman from New Orleans. Corkle was injured in practice this week. Part of that intensity that Andrews was trying to instill upon him. We're not, not sure if we're going to see him tonight. You see Coach Bout always making notes. In his 22nd year at Florida State. Sebastian Janikowski from Poland. Now he's got some great leg strength. Built like a linebacker a little bit too. So Duke deep inside their own territory after the timeout. Actually, ball spotted at the nine yard line, a first and ten. Quick step, man in his face, flagged down. And Duke having trouble now establishing anything as Larry Smith was across the line in a flash. And holding again by the Blue Devils. Tom Block. You know, Florida State, uh, Coach Bobby Bowden can't like the fact that Sebastian Janikowski had to make the tackle on that kickoff. Remember, Bill Gramatica, who was another scholarship kicker, left the team this week. He's withdrawn from school at FSU, so Janikowski's the only scholarship kicker. Keith Cottrell, the punter, would be your backup tonight. And even though Florida State started to right the ship here a little bit, Janikowski making a tackle downfield is not a good sign for FSU special teams. Well, you got that right. And Montgomery has exploited them twice. The last one brought back is the penalty was called, Tom, but they have been good. So two sacks on the night for the Seminoles. And now that defensive line of Florida State is absolutely dominating Duke. And they're having trouble getting anything going. Larry Smith, once again, number 96, and on the tackle, 6'5", 288-pound sophomore. You know, we're talking with Mickey Andrews yesterday morning. Uh, I asked him, I said, what's your biggest surprise? And as I mentioned earlier, he said, Larry Smith. I said, why? He said, well, he came here as a freshman, kind of walked around doe-eyed, kind of got into tr some trouble with his work ethic and that type of thing, went through a year of languish, but came back in the, in the fall, after the summer, and they didn't even hardly recognize him. He's been starting ever since. Some intensity shown there. Third and 14. Thompson puts it up. Incomplete. And Duke will be forced to punt out of their own end zone. Corey Thomas was the intended receiver. We talked about it at the top of the show. Wadsworth moving outside from his nose guard position. Watch him work inside and along with some help deliver pressure on Thompson. The ACC's leading sack leader coming into the night was six. Asking what his goal was, he said more than 20. He's <laughs> got a good start. Warwick is set up at the Duke 46-yard line. 
The kick by Morton. Probably a good thing for Duke to hit the turf. And as the flag goes down, again, football spotted at the 46. 41-yard kick if it stays. Well, of course, when you talk about the ACC, the matchup that Florida State was looking forward to is the one against North Carolina a couple of weeks down the road. North Carolina coming in this week, ranked number five in the nation. They were seven miles away this afternoon in Chapel Hill and victorious over Wake Forest by 18. Georgia Tech in Atlanta over NC State by 10. West Virginia winner over Maryland. Another holding call against Florida State on the return. Back them up. They'll start on their 44. You can see his lips moving, but we just can't hear him. Busby still in. Five minutes remaining in the first half. Florida State leading 21 to 7. Minor, Ford, and Busby with the touchdown so far in the first half, all via the ground. Busby just dumps it out into the flat. Travis Miner, and he is met by Stallmeyer at the 45, a gain of just a couple. And again, we harp on it, but another one of the freshman mistakes, the little things, the little things, Mike, that they'll have to get better at. You'll see Miner come out, and in the open field, he will actually stop right here. Watch him. Stops. You can't do that. You, you've got to keep making forward process, uh, progress, rather. If you look at Warwick Dunn last year, he gets in the open field, he makes one move, and he's still going forward. They'll correct that as they get older. So a gain of two and a second and eight. Budsby, time. Oh, what a catch from the shoestrings. It's Warwick. Now he's moving. He's untouched. They're working to the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. The big play of 56 yards to Peter Warwick. And the Seminole strike again. A play very similar to as we opened our show from last week against Miami, except it's all the way across, not a juke and run across. 54-yard touchdown reception for Warwick. That's number 10 in his career. What an outstanding talent. And Janikowski makes a 28-7 Florida State. Now that is what Peter Warwick is all about there, I'll tell you what. Now Busby's pushed his numbers up over 100 yards in the air already, getting half of them there to one of his two favorite targets, the youngster from Bradenton Southeast High School, Peter Warwick. Man, is he fun to watch. 372 yards of all purpose against Clemson. 249 of that through the air in that contest. Well, that was a heck of an afternoon for the young man. Another look at it. It's going to come all the way across and make a shoestring catch right off the turf and then work his way all the way back to the offense's left. Gets a couple of blocks downfield, but most of it is just those two legs moving quicker than everyone else's. Now work with that 200-yard day against Clemson that you spoke of. Simply outstanding that day. Became just the third Seminole in Florida State history to have over 200 yards receiving in a single day. Of course, the great Ron Sellers did it five times, and Kez McCorvey did it back in 1994 against these very Duke Blue Devils. Stay behind the line. Stay behind the line. He's about a quarter of the way to a 200-yard night with a long reception there. What a good kick. And Montgomery stays put this time. Warwick with the two state titles for Paul Meckley and the Southeast Seminoles. Most football teams all over the state of Florida, but in that Sarasota Bradenton area. There's two real all hotbeds. Two real hotbeds. The Sarasota Bradenton and Tampa area, and then of course Miami, right. the Broward and Day area. And the Broward and Day area are recruited by everyone. Mm -hmm. I mean the USC's, the UCLA's, the Washington, Washington States, Notre Dame, Michigan, all the way up the East Coast. They come down to South Florida. There's a lot of cars parked in front of those young men's homes in the time when coaches around the nation are looking to bolster their lineups. Latavius Wilkes, the ball carrier. 
Well, Duke offensively, and if you join us late, Bobby Campbell knocked out of the game. And so they are now down to the guy who was on the list number four at the beginning of the season, Kevin Thompson. Had some things going early, Keith, with Bobby Campbell running the ship with the quick hits, and Thompson just not able to do that. And also Florida State has made an adjustment, and the defensive line is showing their advantage in the quickness. Two wide outs to the left side. Thompson spins, keeps it himself, darts towards the sideline, pushed out of bounce at the 27-yard line by Dexter Jackson. Not noted for his mobility is Thompson, but doing a good, good, good job of getting out of the pocket. He's going to try to get this ball downfield to a receiver crossing. Not open. Jackson has to force him out of bounds, but not before he picks up a, a good seven or eight yard gain, brings up third and two, third and three. Now there's one of the injured quarterbacks we spoke of. Spencer Romine hurt last week in the game against Maryland. He had it going too. Second and three. All oh, the pressure and nowhere to go. They worked right over Wesley White, the left tackle, did Greg Spires. He'll go ahead and get his first sack of the night. Spires' leg almost back to the point where he's ready to be 100%. With that wrap on him, Mike, he looks like he's aggravated a groin. But folks need to recall that uh, about four and a half weeks ago, Spires broke his leg. He got in for limited action against Miami, didn't feel comfortable. But uh, he's not completely healed, and with that wrap on his leg, looks like he's aggravated something. So it'll be a punching situation. Warwick set up at the 35. Morton set to kick. A good booming kick. Warwick backs up to the 25. Quickly, he returns to the 35. Now he's got room towards midfield, and he's brought down there. 55-yard punt, 25-yard return, Rosenberg with the play for Duke. Greg Spires with the leg, back, looking good, Tom Block. Hey, you're right, just to follow up on what Keith was talking about, his quadricep is wrapped now, but he's smiling and laughing on the sideline, so apparently it's not serious, and as you can tell, he was back in there. He was FSU's leading returning sack man from last year before that broken leg slowed him, so it's good to see Spires back in there at full tilt. Mike? Thank you, Tom. 2-11 remaining now in the first half. And the ball spotted at the 49 after the good return by Peter Warren. Busby, complete to Warren. He breaks a tackle at the 40. Now inside the 30 and wrapped down at the 25-yard line. A 25-yard gain. That was actually Damian Harrell on the reception. Back to Spires for a second, Keith. You and I were visiting last night. You said to me something interesting. You said there's something different between the physical healing and the mental healing after an injury. When Spires went in against the Miami, uh, in the Miami contest, he played a couple of three plays and actually pulled himself out. We see Busby take the snap here. We'll finish that. And he goes towards Harrell again, almost intercepted in and out of his arm, settles there defensively. But what often happens is because you've been told it's going to take you five or six weeks to get healed, and they release you in four weeks, and you get out there, and it de just doesn't quite feel right. Mentally, you're not healed. And Greg, uh, suffering from that, had a good week of practice, getting a little more confidence in that leg as we see him adjusting and, and treating the, uh, the quadricep that uh, Tom talked about. But mentally is where he needs to get healed now so that he doesn't worry about re-injuring that leg. Under two minutes remaining in the first half. Busby in and out of the hands of Harrell incomplete on second and ten. So Busby now nine of 14 on the night for just over 135 yards. Good delivery by Busby. I believe that was Peter Warwick actually the intended receiver. That's the one of the knocks on Peter is his inconsistency. That ball very catchable and he drops it. And again, that's something that has to come from concentration and reps. That ain't nine getting it. Farrell and Warwick about the same size, both with speed and both set up. Harrell to the near side, Warwick to the far side. Busby looking towards the end zone. Warwick hauls it in at the three. Twenty-two yard completion to Peter Warwick. Grant and Jones were there for Duke. 
Florida State with good clock management, about a minute 38 left. Plenty of time. Florida State with all three of their timeouts remaining. Warren kind of limping off the football field. Might have twisted the left ankle. First and goal from the three for Florida State. A minute 25 remaining in the half. Busby throws, almost intercepted, broken up by Eric Jones, and there was not a white jersey around the direction in which Busby was throwing the football. There's two types of inside routes that Florida State runs down here. One's a quick slant. The other one is up the field and across just a little bit. This is the latter. Eric Jones sprinting outside. Busby doesn't pick him up. Had he intercepted and maintained his feet, we would be saying uh, score Duke about now. There was nothing but green in front of him. You got that right. So Abdullah is back in the backfield. And Warwick back in the game from the three. And that is all the place that Venez Gooch will go. You got to keep track of them. The tailbacks, they're all young. The junior feaster and then the three freshmen, but Bobby Bowden does not hesitate to use them all as Gooch getting his first action of the evening. Gooch at 5'10", 178 pounds. Eight carries coming into the night's contest. Florida State using one of their timeouts in order to preserve that clock. All that proceeds will benefit the American Cancer Society's Coaches versus Cancer campaign. See Thad Busby, number 20, Venez Gooch, the man he spoke of a moment ago, was actually hurt last year against Duke early in the season. And ended up being a medical red shirt, hurting the ankle, then he hurt it again in the spring. And of course, he and Coles, the first pair from Jacksonville since Edgar Bennett back in 1987. Don't forget, coming up at the half, Keith will visit with the athletic director at Florida State University, Dave Hart, Jr. He might have a surprise visitor up in the booth to join you for that, too. So stay tuned here at the half on Sunshine. Our score is 28 to 7. We've just got over a minute remaining in the second quarter. Mike Goldberg, Keith Jones, Tom Block, happy that you have joined us on this Saturday evening. A beautiful Saturday evening in Durham, North Carolina. A game that started well for the Blue Devils. They moved the football, missed a field goal attempt from about 52 yards, but then took advantage of a Florida State turnover to have the early lead 7 to nothing. But then as the theme has been for the last two years, it continued tonight, a quarterback gets hurt, and Florida State has taken advantage of this football game ever since, looking for potentially a 28-point lead going into the half. Third and goal from the three. 28-7 the score. Busby, all kinds of time room, touchdown Florida State. It parted like the Red Sea, and Busby teeters into the end zone. I guess that's saying, hey, if they can do it on the other side of the ball, we can do it here. Good coverage downfield by the Duke secondary. Linebackers run out. Smart thing to do is tuck it and move right up the middle. Busby with his second touchdown on the ground. The first one uh, leaping, the second one rushing. Janikowski's point after attempt is good, and Florida State finds itself up by 28. Not take long, that is for sure. And it hasn't. But it really has stemmed, in, and you talked about it on the first series of the game, how Duke moved the football, and you said they've got to do that. They've got to give their defense a rest. And then, unfortunately, Kevin Thompson has been victimized a bit ever since the injury to Campbell, and the defense has gotten no rest, and Florida State, because of that, has gotten great field position and gotten that offense on the football field frequently. And Duke unable to capitalize on both of Scotty Montgomery's long kickoff returns. The first one, they stalled three and out. The second one called back by a penalty. And you see Dad Busby and Mark Outson there and Kaleeb and the rest of the Florida State uh, brain trust, as it were. It's very important now, especially going into the second half, that Duke does not abandon their game plan, especially with that quote-unquote 14 quarterback. They need to stay with the quick hitters. They need to stay with the quick passes, or Florida State will continue to exploit their inexperience at that skilled position. Ugly has gotten uglier for the Blue Devils. 
But they'll fight through it and try to make it a contest, although they trail by 28. Janikowski, what a story he is. And a soccer player, too, at Daytona Beach Seabreeze High School. Nearly 70 goals, 69 for Seabreeze last year for the state record. Parents are Polish. He played on the Polish national soccer team for under 17-year-olds. He's the lefty, and he has been good. And his kickoffs have been long tonight, too, Keith. This one not quite into the end zone. Montgomery at the two. And he's got room again. Montgomery's found something, and so has the Duke special teams. And you can't just give all the credit to Scotty Montgomery as Jackson makes the stop. Those Duke special team players are opening up some holes. Well, and we have to be careful to say this in a way that is, is uh, complimentary as it's intended, but Duke by no means has stupid football players on their team. A very high academic uh, excellence uh, in this program, and special teams, Mike, comes down to doing your job. And doing your job comes down to wanting to do it and knowing how to do it and doing it well in the Duke special teams. You'll see it again, like we've seen two other previous times. It'll open right up because people are doing their job. On one missed tackle, Montgomery exploits it. They're first and goal on the 39. So a return of about 37 yards up top. Montgomery wide open. Will his speed be enough? Montgomery working towards the end zone. Touchdown, Blue Devils. 60-yard touchdown toss from Kevin Thompson to the flank of Scotty Montgomery. Oh, my goodness. Just like we talked about, it's like Fred Goldsmith was listening. Do something quick. Stay with what got you here. Use your talents. Bring somebody open. Continue to go to the guy that's got the hot hand. Quick three-step drop, fly pattern. Montgomery gets behind everybody. Smith. Jackson, Samari roll in pursuit, but they're not going to catch him. And Duke strikes right back. So the point after for Duke to get their 14th point of the night, and they do. So they strike quickly. Now watch a moment ago. The three defensive players from Florida State could not catch Scotty Montgomery, but the quarterback, Kevin Thompson, tried to do the best job he could to do so. Again, but you notice the three-step drop. He took a little bit of hesitation to give Montgomery some separation. And, and folks, there's a young man, 14 coming into camp, finds himself starting and getting playing time, rather, against the fourth-ranked team in the country. This young man, an ACC sophomore, Scotty Montgomery is for real. Officially, they call it a 61-yard touchdown reception. And remember, they had the good field position because of his return after the kickoff by Sebastian a moment ago. We're going to have to start charting that Montgomery all-purpose yardage versus Peter Warwick all-purpose yardage. Montgomery, a sophomore. Florida State will see him at least two more times. Cuts the lead to 21. Played a lot last year as a true freshman, did Scotty Montgomery, and obviously that experience has helped out. But if you've got speed and you're blessed with it and you know how to use it, and that's the key, Keith, it can be a very lethal weapon. Not a surprise, Montgomery number one on the team coming in with 17 receptions. Although when you look at that speed, if you look at his yard per catch coming into the night at 11.6, you kind of bat your eyes and wonder if maybe the uh, press release is incorrect, especially now that you get a chance to watch him in person. And now you think that 11.6 should be more like 16 or 17 per catch. Lavernius Coles, one of the deep men, football taken at the two. Now he's got room. At the 21-yard line and tied up was Lavernius Coles, the sophomore from Jacksonville, a 14-yard return. Lay Marshall, the senior, makes the special teams tackle for the Duke Blue Devils. Again, I go back to coaching and discipline the Duke kickoff team, showing some great poise and great ability to stay in lane. Coles ran around a lot. But on Florida State still first and 10 on the 22. 31 seconds left here in the first half of play. 
you know, had nearly 50 points combined already put on the scoreboard. And I guess it's not a surprise that 35 of them belong to Florida State. Some might be a little startled that 14 of them belong to Duke. A handoff spinning. Not going a whole lot of anywhere as Davy Ford is Chike Abunawe. That senior who we spoke of at the top of the show makes the tackle. Abunawe's been neutralized so far through two quarters. We haven't called his main very often. Florida State will be content to let the clock wind down. Well, as you mentioned earlier, Abunawe playing alongside now Cincinnati Bengal, Billy Granville the past two years. And he is his teammates pretty happy that they got the big touchdown late and hopefully can try to establish some type of momentum at the start of the second half. Seminoles taking advantage of some Duke turnovers, especially the interception thrown by Thompson inside their own 10-yard line. And they lead after the end of one half by a score of 35 to 14. Don't forget, lots coming up in our halftime presentation as we are enjoying a Florida State lead here after the first half. Let's go down to Tom Block on the field with head coach Bobby Bowden. All right, thanks, guys. Coach, you worked all week on having intense practices so your team would stay focused this week, and then boom, right away, Duke gets you out of the gate. That had to concern you. Yeah, we looked like we never practiced. Jumping off sides. There must have been 15 penalties at the first of the game. I was wondering if they was going to ever get one. I think they finally did. Did you uh, change anything, or was it a matter of your team just settling down a little bit because then the running game started to take over in the first quarter? But getting penalties, that's the only problem we have, getting penalties. And then we've gotten careless. Kickoff returns is, are ridiculous against us. I mean, we're, we're just nobody going down and tackling. And then uh, that last, just a plain takeoff down for a touchdown. Can you ever get, did you get a sense at all that your team might come out and be lackadaisical like that? Uh, I, we tried to do everything we could this week to prevent it. But uh, there have been a couple of levels about all They got that touchdown late. How long do you plan to keep Busby in there? We present. Until I'm happy. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Coach. Good luck. Mike, Keith. Well, thank you, Tom. And uh, evidenced by that interview, it will be a little bit of time before Coach Bowden is happy. Disappointed, although Florida State has the 21-point lead at the half. Superman. Much more coming up at halftime. CC. Oh, wide open is E.G. Green. I believe that might be his first reception of the evening. Make it his second. Out for the first down past the 35-yard line. Grant and Jones were there. Duke coming with an all-out blitz. Rut Busby and E.G. Ernie Reed real quick. Thad gets the ball to Ernie. He's wide open. Unable to get by the one lone defender and help comes. That's right, you had mentioned earlier how it was his 32nd straight. Well, first and 10 from the 37. Budsby. This time he comes to the near side, and it is Damian Harrell. Harrell, the senior from Miami, has seen the ball come his way on frequent occasion this evening. Harrell out all of last year, injured, 6'3", 190 pound, now senior. Had eight catches coming into the ball game, sixth on the team. Florida State converts first down on their own 47-48. Busby now under heavy pressure, throws it up. And a good defensive play made by Eric Jones, number 23, as the intended receiver was green. Jones at six foot, 185 pounds, a sophomore going up against Ernie. Evenly matched side size-wise. Watch Ernie move downfield. A little stutter step and then break it back outside. That's a shortened corner route. Busby gets nailed and delivers the ball just a little bit short. Good play by Eric Jones to break it up. Here's the pressure. Busby rolling to his left, sets and has to stand in there and gets smothered by the Blue Devil. That was the strong safety, Darius Clark. And once again, the blitz is on. Busby gets rid of it quickly. That time it was a boon away. And Jones with the pressure and the pass goes incomplete. Good read again by Busby, but just doesn't deliver the ball. And, you know, in talking with Mark Rick earlier this week, I asked him, I said, you know, it seems that Thad is making all the right decisions. He just sometimes doesn't deliver the ball. Would you agree with that statement? He had one word. Absolutely. <laughs> Let's see how he does here. They may bring him again on third and ten. They're showing blitz. And it should go as a procedure penalty on the offensive line of Florida State. 
what happens a lot of times, Mike, is Kevin Long will be calling out that defensive front in the blocking scheme, and when people start moving around, Kevin will actually audibly say something, and if they're going on first sound or first count, then oftentimes the linemen will confuse that. Kevin does a great job of anchoring that offensive line, making all of the front calls. 6'5", 290-pound senior. Coaching staff calls him uh, their good man. <laughs> Everything he does, from academics to his personal life to on the playing field to his interaction with his teammates, therefore, he's a captain. Third and 15. Busby towards the right side. There's going to be a penalty call. Busby gets the toss away in and out of the hands of Warwick. Defended tightly by the strong safety Darius Clark, the sophomore. The indication from where the flag was dropped would be we're going to see a holding. That'll happen a lot of times when your immobile quarterback starts mobilizing. Again, Busby, certainly not a Charlie Ward been very effective on his rollouts, but you get those offensive linemen where they think their man's going to get it to the quarterback. They're going to do whatever it takes to protect. Let's see if we can pick it up on the left-hand side of your screen. I think that was it right there. Anytime those hands might get outside of the, the, the frame of the body, the referees and the umpires are going to be very quick to call those penalties. So Contro will kick for the third time tonight, his longest, 46 yards, averaging just over 40 yards a kick. Back deep, Ben Erdeljack. Erdeljack, fair catch, signaled at the 20-yard line. So Duke will get the football just underway here in the third quarter. Knowles lead by three touchdowns. So we are welcoming you back to Durham, North Carolina, Wallace Wade Stadium. There was movement that time by big number 76, Wesley White, and I believe we'll have an illegal procedure call against the Blue Devils. Wes White's there in playing time with Patrick Manley. Be candidly, Mike, I'm surprised with that call. Tony Bryant jumped offside, but he didn't touch anybody. Right. Wes White moves. Last time I checked, that's a legal procedure. <laughs> so 11 total penalties now in the contest. That'll be first and five for the Blue Devils from the 26-yard line. Thompson at quarterback. Up top. Oh, Montgomery tried to sneak behind again, and the pass was too far. Montgomery's so explosive off the ball. He's got the great foot speed, but he's got great acceleration. And that's becoming more and more important as you get off the ball to get upfield. See him stutter right there and then just blow by. Shevin Smith sits and gets behind. If Thompson had been accurate in his delivery, Scotty would have had another touchdown. Now, Thompson's only completed one pass in three attempts, but that was the 61-yard touchdown toss to Montgomery. Second and five now, Montgomery off the field. The pitch, and Wilkes is stopped after a gain of two or three. Latavius Wilkes, top rusher on the team, and the first freshman in Duke history to lead the team in rushing. He did that last season. Actually led the ACC with freshman rushing at 554 yards, and Mikey didn't start till the seventh game of the season. That's right. Everything in the latter half of the Duke campaign. Another flag on the play. What a shot. Well, that big year for Duke, Goldsmith's first year when they went 8-3 and three and went to the Hall of Fame ball. I believe it was Robert Baldwin they had running the football. And you really don't have anybody like Baldwin in the Duke lineup right now, but they've got some youngsters and Wilkes and Epperson, the sophomore and freshman respectively, who they hope will turn out to be good ones, says Florida State now getting flagged for the 12th time in the contest for 82 yards, and Bobby Bowden talked to Tom Block right at the end of the first half, and you know, there's going to be some discussions early part of next week about the mental errors. Thompson pumps once, and he's hit from behind, football oh. on the ground, Coward picks it up, he is into the end zone untouched, touchdown Florida State! 
24-yard return after the fumble for the touchdown by Cowart. It was Tony Bryant who got in and delivered the hit on Kevin Thompson and forced the fumble. We talked about it at the top of the show. Andre Wadsworth with his quickness outside and right behind him was Sam Cowart. What a great story. Injured in the Orange Bowl, misses the entire 96 season, takes a red shirt, comes back, changes his number so that every time he looks at himself on film, he sees the number one. Watch Bryant come in, number 40. Does a good job of stripping there at the end. Thompson drops the ball without missing a beat. Another right off of the shoestrings. Cowart comes up with it and scores. Fourth sack of the night, credited to the Seminoles, 17th of the season. A PAT no good, so the score stands 41-14. Here it is again. One more look at it. Watch Bryant come around with his right hand and just slap at the ball underneath, and then Cowart very alertly, right off of the turf, picks it up. And he may be 6'3", 239, but he can run. Tower again. Taylor. Oh, he picked that cleanly. They play a short stop in the major leagues. Tom downstairs. Second touchdown of the season for Sam Howard. Uh, the interception. He's the only current floor state player. Sam Coward with the score to make it 41-14. Florida State in the lead. Kind of missed that report from Tom a moment ago. We'll check back in at field level with Tom Block in a second. We'll have more on Sam Coward. The Duke coaches said as much as they fear Wadsworth they know about Darrell Bush, who has not played a lot tonight. Bush kind of nursing the coin injury. They are really impressed with Coward. Montgomery breaks the tackle. Now moving back around to the far side of the football field, and he is hauled down at the 20. 13-yard return. The stop by Jeff Cheney. Let's try back downstairs with Tom. Yeah, what I was saying about Sam Coward, guys, you know, there's a lot of fifth-year seniors on this Florida State team, but Sam Coward, and all those guys redshirted in 93, except for Sam Coward, he's the only current Seminole that's actually played a game here at Duke because he took his redshirt year last year when he was injured. So Coward's familiar with this Wallace Wade Stadium. That's right, Tom. This is only the second time in the history of these two schools that the Seminoles have played here in Durham. It's the third time they have played Duke in the last couple of years in ACC competition, 5-0 and lifetime against the Blue Devils, but they played the one game in the state of Florida at the Citrus Bowl a couple of years ago. And Duke this week, and as you said, very smart students, no question about it. These football players at Duke not only preparing for the number four team in the nation, but also spending a couple of days in the middle of the week taking their midterms. Well, actually, the students are off. They're in the middle of their fall break. They take their midterms the first of this particular week in October, and then a majority of the students are gone. Of course, Duke known for its academics, and Thompson and crew no different. This is a very intelligent football team, very fundamental in their design. Yes, certainly they are. They hand the football off. It goes for a couple of yards. You talk about fundamental intellect. Well, they're also very analytical. And Coach Larry Beckish was telling us a funny story yesterday. He said sometimes these guys are so analytical, they'll walk up to a kid like a John Gordon, the center on the team, and say, John, you know, it might be more effective if you stop 18 inches or step back 18 inches off the line after this play. And at, at, at any other school, they'd probably say, okay, Coach, at Duke, they go, wouldn't it be more effective if my angle was from 15 inches back? Quite amazing. Yes, it is. Third and eight from the 22. Rolling and incomplete. Ball not even close to Corey Thomas. Becker said some of these guys on the Duke team are so smart, he's afraid to even talk to him. In the preparation for the game, Keith, you, you start going down the, the media guide and the notes and wrote down about a couple of Duke players, honor roll, honor roll, and then all of a sudden, I noticed that after every play, honor roll in high school, 3.9, 4.0s, academic excellence, 
That is the norm, not the exception here in Durham, North Carolina. And unfortunately, punting situations have been too. Lots of pressure, kick is blocked. Rolling towards the end zone, that's going to be a touchdown for the Seminoles. Recovered by Derek Gibson, the freshman from Miami. And he will be credited for the touchdown. Gibson seeing playing time on special teams only, not listed on the depth chart per se. But there's a, the first highlight of his career. Comes from the right-hand side, actually right up the middle. Dexter Jackson. Jackson, number 11, the Quincy native. And the freshman there to pounce on it. A couple of very quick defensive scores for Florida State. And they look for their 48th point of the night. And they get it. Now, we mentioned earlier that Florida State has dominated not only in the ACC, but in their five wins against the Duke Blue Devils, they've averaged 53 points. They are nearly there again tonight. Mike Goldberg, Keith Jones, Tom Block. Happy to be with you tonight. Uh, Pay-per-view Sunshine Network presentation of Seminole football, of course, we will be with you all season long, not only for football, but basketball, volleyball, and the likes with lots of great action from Tallahassee and around the ACC of the Florida State Seminoles. Dwayne Epperson and Ben Erdelak will be back to receive the kick of Sebastian Janikowski. As the Seminoles undoubtedly will win this game this evening and open 5-0 on the season for the sixth time under Bobby Bowden. And a couple of those victories on the road hard fought. USC ended up doing a good job in dominating the Trojans and, of course, the Clemson. And now on the road at Duke as Epperson brings it back to about the 20-yard line. 21-yard return credited to Dwayne Epperson. A small but talented freshman. The backup to Latavius Wilkes is Epperson. We haven't seen him from the offensive set. He's been in on every kickoff return, opening up holes for Scotty Montgomery. Sam Coward a moment ago. Larry Beckish was describing a play that Cowart made a couple of weeks ago, and his eyes just opened up. He was in awe of the talent of that young man. And Beckish has seen a lot of good ones. 268 career tackles for Sam Cowart. Now you see him, people jumping all over the place again. Now Beckish, their offensive coordinator, has been around over two decades, so we've seen some good ones as Dorsey was the man who moved. Oh, so Florida State and offsides the call. You made a comment at the top of the show, Keith, playing for yourself, practicing this week for yourself, and mentally, there's been some tests that have been failed. I think if you look at Florida State performance, particularly in the first half, you have to give them no better than a C mm -hmm. when it comes to that particular area of the game. Ball. On the ground, who has it? Spoken like a true player. I still can see it. I just can't do anything about it. <laughs> You'll see a bad exchange right now. As Florida State is taught, everybody hollers ball. That means get your by eye back to where it should be. Thompson does a good job of crawling in there and recovering his own bad exchange. Well, we didn't have to restrain you from the announce booth, at least. The physical part just isn't there, my friend. At least it's there mentally. Or at least partly there. Up the middle again for a gain of just a couple on a second and five. Wilkes, the ball carrier, and a stop made by a couple Seminoles. Kind of me, Rashid actually had the football there. Duke just one for five on third down conversions this evening. Florida State coming into the night's nice contest on third down conversions from the defensive side, only allowing 17% of those to be converted. An absolutely phenomenal statistic. Third and four. Thompson just looking for anything. Now defensive front seven was over the line so quickly that even the simple option play, or at least what should be somewhat simple at times, with guys like Andre Wadsworth in your face becomes very difficult. Well, you can't do this. Look at the top of your screen. You'll see Wadsworth. He actually has the pitch. 
he physically puts himself in the position to take the pitch away. And when Thompson cuts it back inside, he has the agility to recover inside. Let's see if we can get another look here. Watch number 85 and white on the left-hand side of your screen. He's actually got the pitch and then falls back down inside when Thompson makes the decision to turn it up, forcing the fourth down. There's your nose guard last year, the guy that's supposed to be fat and just wallow around in the middle. <laughs> I hope Larry Smith doesn't get mad about me saying that. Aaron. FSU's current no score. That's right. Aaron Duke, the junior. In its center for John Gordon. Limping off the football field. Going back to Wadsworth for a moment. The ability of him to really change his whole focus is just going to help him as he tries to kind of work through those losses of Reynard Wilson and Peter Boulware. But I'll tell you, with Wadsworth, Smith, Johnson, Bryant, Spires, some of those are in good shape up front. Moving from the nose guard position to a defensive end, we're in this country, is like moving from a point guard to a shooting guard. Pressure again on Morton. This time he gets the kick away. In and out of the hands of Warwick. He gets back and recovers the football at the 39. So a 44-yard kick and virtually no return for Peter Warren. You need to check and see if Mickey Andrews' headset is still intact. He may have just thrown it down. Well, Thad Busby's night has come to an end. 12 of 19, 185 yards and a couple of touchdowns, and in comes Dan Kendra. The sophomore with that linebacker mentality. Kendra, the reverse. And not spinning and going much of anywhere is the youngster Marvin Minnis, the freshman from Miami. Had a chance to visit with Marvin last night when we got into the hotel. The team just finishing up their evening meal. 6'1", 185-pound freshman. Watch him working left to right. Has three catches coming in tonight. That's his first reverse. And Spook wanting to get his hands on the ball a little bit more. Well, they uh, compare him a bit to Andre Cooper. And he has got big shoes to fill if that's the comparisons that he will have. From the same high school in Miami Northwestern that produced Marvin Jones and Chris Combs, the man we talked about earlier, knocks down the Kendra attempted pass. Danny coming into the contest, as we saw earlier, 8 of 14. 123 yards, two touchdowns, but he's also rushed the ball nine times for 46 yards, most notably last week against Miami. 48 yard on one particular scalpel. He's only 6'2", which compares to Busby at about 6'3", 6'4". Defensive linemen get up and get their hands in the way. Chris Cobbs does a good job of batting it down. Florida State facing third and nine. Under intense pressure. Kendra avoids the rush. He's going to get hit. Chiki Abunaway with the sack for Duke. They brought everybody. They had pressure from the backside on Kendra. And then Abunaway came from the front. Combs the play prior. Chiki on this one. Watch Abunaway just make his way up. Kendra eludes the first blitzer. And then watch number 54 coming to your screen. That's a heads up, backward tackle. And that's a big man he's tackling in Kendra at 245, 250 pounds. Well, Chris Ruzik, number 96, had the pressure from the backside as the punt by Cottrell is fourth of the night. It falls and takes a big roll for Florida State. Nearly down to the 21-yard line. Well, Dan Kendra, as you mentioned, not quite as tall as some of the Great quarterbacks who have come out of Western Pennsylvania, where is the city that Kendra is from? Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Guys like Marino, Montana, Kelly, and of course Notre Dame's Ron Paulus, all from that same area. That's a hotbed for talent when it comes to the position of quarterback. The one thing they all have in common is that competitive spirit. Danny chooses to exert his in the weight room and via the foot, if you will, and running oftentimes, but those are the quarterbacks every bit the competitor. Now Montgomery breaks one tackle, and he's hit at the 30-yard line. So Thompson, after a rough start, Keith has not looked all that bad, and of course he's hooked up on frequent occasion with the flanker Scotty Montgomery, the sophomore. Well, again, as we mentioned during halftime and during the first half, Duke going with the quick three-step drops. This one's a little longer. 
getting a little more confidence in Thompson, giving Scotty Montgomery a little bit more of an opportunity to move downfield. Florida State doing some substitution. Yeah, Bill feel... Howard in there on that play, number 46. Yep. And now they try to run the football on a second and one, and they'll get the first down. Epperson, the ball carrier, and Duke will move the chains. Now, Coach Bowden, obviously, as we mentioned, not entirely pleased with what he has seen tonight, but comfortable enough now to get some of those second unit guys in and get him some reps. 201 victories at Florida State, now currently tied with Vince Dooley. That's right. Wins at an institution. Course you got some people named Osborne and Paterna ahead of you that are still active. Next up, after he breaks the tie with Dooley tonight and gets his 200 and second, he'll be three shy of the legendary Ohio State coach, Woody Hayes. Bobby, of course, with 274 career victories when you throw in uh, West Virginia and Sanford. Now, speaking of the head coach, don't forget, you can join Sunshine Mondays at 6 o'clock for the Bobby Bowden Show. Tune in as the coach reviews the previous game, looks ahead to the Seminoles' upcoming opponents. That's the Bobby Bowden Show, Mondays at 6 on Sunshine. Thompson to pass on first and 10, over the middle, into double coverage, and the flag goes. Intended receiver was Terrence Dupree, the sophomore, whose father happened to be a Florida Gator in the Seminoles. Meet Dupree the way they would like to meet any Gator on any corner at any time. Todd Fryer in on pass defense. Number 35, as is often the case, you may make a good play with one hand, but you make a bad one with the other. Fryer just a little quick getting there, actually knocks the ball down, but in the eyes of the Zebras, just a little early getting there. How many penalties is that on Florida State now? 13, 14? Way too many. That's the better answer. First and 10 from the 46. Movement again. Okay. Was he drawn off? We'll add one more. Chad Molina, number 64, is the right guard for Duke, but the contact was made by the seminal player. Yep. My goodness. Need we say more what he's thinking? What, what's that picture in thousand words? Mm-hmm. And Florida State is going to call the timeout. Look at that, 14 penalties. And amazingly, after one of their best performances in years with just four flags thrown against them last week against the Hurricanes. Everybody was so upbeat during the week because Florida State has historically been flagged heavily. A lot of it has to do with aggressive play and that type of thing. But to go through the Miami ball game, to shut them out, to have four penalties, very much a reversal now that you come up here to Durham. Get flagged 14 times and we've got six minutes left in the third quarter. Quite a reversal. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, step aside for a moment. Florida State in command. Well, if it's hoops, it's here. Hard to believe. Basketball season almost upon us. As the football season continues for Duke. And it's been a long day for Kevin Thompson. But this will be an experience that will be good for him along the line. He's just a sophomore, a red shirt sophomore, who had only had one passing attempt in his career coming into tonight. He hails from a... Uh high school program and area Thomasville and Thomasville Central down in South Georgia that they produce a pretty good quarterback every now and then one comes to mind Charlie Ward <laughs> yeah he was uh, pretty good but of course the the story and the theme for the last two years for Duke has been quarterbacks getting hurt Tom Block well, I tell you, apparently all Duke quarterbacks are cursed because if you think about it, Dave Brown, who played at Duke and now plays for the Giants, he's injured this week with a bad <laughs> pectoral muscle. And guess who's replacing him? Danny Cannell, who played at Florida State. So I guess for whatever reason, the Duke QBs are just getting injured right now, guys. Must be karma. Bad. Third and four from the 48. Montgomery. Thompson looks his way. Pass was deflected at the line of scrimmage. And it goes right into the hands of the Duke Blue Devil player, Terrence Dupree. There's a break that Duke needed. 
And it was certainly a break. I think Thompson was actually trying to get the ball out to Scotty Montgomery. He's going to try to throw the ball to flat. It gets batted straight up in the air by number 91 for Florida State, Sharon Dorsey. And there's Terrence Dupree with his second reception of the year. Jolly on the spot, as it were. Thompson baiting to his right just a little bit sets. Sharon gets his left hand, right hand up, bats it right back down the lane where the tight end is. And Terrence Dupree right there for the reception. So a 14-yard gain and a first down at the 34 of the Seminoles. Thompson hands it off. Oh, there's room. Epperson inside the 15, dragged down by Roll at the 13. Wayne Epperson got through the initial pursuit, found a hole and gained 24 yards. Coming right at you, you're going to see a little delayed action here. Isolation right up there. Good block by Lay Marshall. A couple of missed tackles, and Epperson shows why, as a freshman, this coaching staff is very excited about it. Great burst of speed. Duke on the FSU 11, 12 yard line. So Duke looking to get their third touchdown of the contest. Just under five minutes remaining here in the third. Pressure again, spinning, room, working inside the five and dragged down at the two is Thompson. Tackled by Tate Cody. Now Thompson has shown some mobility. Another look at it, good coverage downfield and then pressure from the quarterback's right. He sprints out. Tate Cody doesn't grab him right here by the ankle. He scores. This is a, a picture of a young quarterback, Mike, gaining maturity, getting confidence, both in terms of himself and the coaching staff in terms of him. This is great experience for a young quarterback in a situation like this. Gain of nine, second and one from the two-yard line. Thompson again, pressure, throwing. In and out of the hands of the Florida State player and into the hands of Terrence Dupree. Touchdown, Duke. How did that football get through? Thompson with his second Duke touchdown pass, both of the night in his career. Let's get a look, look at it. It's going to go right through a white jersey and then flip right up into Terrence's hand. Number 45 for Florida State, Lamont Green, is all over it. It squeezes out, and there's Dupree, jolly on the spot, as it were, again. And the kick is up and good. So it was a drive that somehow belonged to Terrence Dupree with a little help from some friends. Only one reception, as I mentioned, coming into tonight's ball, cat, ball game did Dupree have. He catches one to convert a first down on a deflection, and he catches his touchdown pass. You see pressure with blitz there by Shevin Smith. Catches his touchdown pass on a second deflection. Well, it's a very old saying, but sometimes it certainly is better to be lucky than good. Not to say that this kid won't be good. Just a sophomore, Terrence Dupree. We haven't called his name much. Uh, much. Dupree plays behind number nine for Fred Goldsmith's team, Jeff Hodrick, who probably is your all-ACC tight end. Yep. We've not called his name tonight. Florida State, a good job of shutting him down, but Dupree learning from the best in Hodrick. Well, be sure to tune in to Seminole Sports Magazine Saturdays at 9.30 in the morning for a complete look at FSU athletics. You'll see features, highlights on Seminole Sports and athletes, as well as interviews with all the coaches. Seminole Sports Magazine, Saturday mornings at 9.30, only here on Sunshine Network. 48-21 is our score. Florida State in the lead. Mickey Andrews, Mark Richt. Always coaching, and that is one of the beautiful things about college sports, and you put the second unit in and the third unit, and although the game on paper is over, it is not over because the learning never stops when you've got to rebuild and reload each season to try to remain amongst the tops in the nation. See Coach Chuck Amata there on Mickey's right, left of your screen. This Florida State staff intact, doing a great job. Football taken at the six-yard line return to the 22, a 16-yard return for Jermaine Stringer. Jermaine's a name we have not said a lot tonight. He's another youngster. Jermaine averaging almost 23 yards per kickoff return. 
Well, he's got that dangerous speed, too. Second in the nation during his high school years in the 100. 10.18. That's fast. Excuse me, Mike. The coaching staff says the problem is not with his feet. It's with his hands. <laughs> he's a bit raw, isn't he? They pitch it back. And the football taken by Davey Ford. And Ford pushed to the outside and hit there by Jones. Maybe got a couple at best. Jones coming up from his safety position. Had 31 tackles coming into the night. And as you alluded to earlier, you know, you don't like talking about your safeties being in the top of your tackling chart. Jones very active from his uh, free safety position back there. Yeah, no question. Jones and Settles and Grant all have been very busy tonight, Keith. They give it to Ford again. And he'll be about five yards shy of the first down yardage needed. Darius Clark comes up and makes the stop. Sometimes you have to take your victories in small things. Darius Clark comes up, makes a tackle. He's a little bit happy. I guess he hasn't gained, uh, advanced up at that scoreboard lately. <laughs> Happy midterms are over. Third and five from the 27. Quick step drop, Kendra dumps it off, almost intercepted. Thrown into a tightly covered receiver. Tawambi settles there defensively. That's two drives Florida State has had the equivalent of their second team in. They've been ineffective. Duke doing a good job. Quick step, good coverage by Settles. Kendra actually throws the ball right into his bread basket. The Wombie's not able to come up with it. Duke forces Florida State to punt. Cotro will punt it for the fifth time. Short kick. And a fair catch made at the 42-yard line. 30-yard kick for Keith Cottrell. You know, Dan Kendra getting his turn after Thad Busby. With some help from the defense and some Duke turnovers helped put this game out of reach. Kendra seeing increased playing time as the scores go up. The one thing he has to focus on, Mike, and this is very important to uh, someone that is a uh, fundamental as Mark Rick, is when he's in there, he has to do things right. It's not excusable just because Florida State's ahead. Over the middle, in the double coverage, they went towards the hot receiver, Terrence Dupree, and the pass will go incomplete. Well, the Blue Devils have lost six straight games. It'll be seven after tonight to top 10 opponents, Keith. Their last victory against a top 10 opponent is when they beat seventh ranked Clemson in 1989. And guess who the head coach of the Duke Blue Devils was that season? The head coach of the alma mater of Fred Goldsmith. That is exactly right, big fella. Steve Spurrier with a fantastic career here at Duke. Goldsmith coming in, and Goldsmith, a 1967 graduate of the University of Florida in his own right. And Goldsmith from Coral Gables, and Tom Block from Tallahassee back downstairs. Spurrier and Goldsmith. Goldsmith was in Spurrier's wedding, so you think Bobby Bowden's got plenty of reason to be enthused for this game. He's coaching against a guy from Coral Gables, went to the University of Florida, friends with Steve Spurrier, but considering all that, in the uh, mid-70s when Bowden first came to FSU, he almost hired Fred Goldsmith, who was the defensive coordinator across town at FAMU. It didn't work out, but he almost brought Fred Goldsmith to FSU. In the wedding together, and ironically, Larry Beckish, the offensive coordinator of Duke, worked with Mickey Andrews in the USFL. Arizona Wranglers, I believe. Well, there's some crossover, that's for sure. And Goldsmith, one of the true gentlemen in the game, no question. Without a doubt. His team overmanned, undersized on most Saturday afternoons as Wilkes, the ball carrier, is going to be well short of the yardage needed. To get towards the first down, it'll bring up a third down and very long is a loss of one on that play. Jared yet Johnson, he continues to teach, number, you know. Excuse me, Mike. Jared Johnson, number 92 in white, glory, makes man. that tackle without his headgear. <laughs> what is it the uh, Monday night crew says? I hope there's not a head in that helmet. A third and 16. Final minute of the third quarter. And incomplete. 
Looking towards the senior Corey Thomas in a punting situation. Thomas very quiet tonight. Dupree and Montgomery, the go-to guys so far for Thompson. But it, Corey Thomas always a threat. Of course, Keith Duke going 11 last year, just snapped a 15-game losing streak when they beat Navy earlier in the season. So from 8-3 to the Hall of Fame Bowl to some tough times for Fred Goldsmith and his staff. The punt falls, and it will be touched up at the 28-yard line, a 33-yard kick for Morton. Well, extracurricular. Dexter's got to learn that you don't do that on the opponent's side of the field. <laughs> Cardinal rule. You know, you talk about Goldsmith as we see uh, Florida State, Dexter Jackson, and Shevin Smith trot off. In that 94 campaign, they go eight and three. He is so well respected, Mike, that at eight and three, because of where Duke had been and come mm -hmm. from, he's voted the Bobby Dodd Coach of the Year. That's right. Which is one of the highest national awards given in the coaching profession. For Florida State's Bobby Bowden's won it once, but so has Fred Goldsmith. It says something, doesn't it? And another flag. There was lots of delays on the line there as Busby back in the football game at quarterback was trying to get things started. Well, I told you Mark Rick was a fundamentalist. Mm -hmm. Kendra goes in for two drives, doesn't do well. There you see Busby right back, Danny on the bench. Not a guy you want angry with you, however. Kendra or Rick? Either one. <laughs> or Jones. I love uh, the opportunity anytime I get it to talk with Mark Rick. Mark, a uh, uh, University of Miami player, right. played uh, behind the likes of Jim Kelly, Benny Testaverde. His segment coach was Earl Morrill. He knows a little bit about the quarterback game and a little bit about offensive football. Sure does. Bernie Kosar was around him too, wasn't he? Exactly. Thank you. So first and 15 after the penalty. Florida has tied the game in the third quarter in Baton Rouge. And it'll go incomplete. Pass was deflected by a man up front. Probably Chris Combs again, the way things have been going tonight. And E.G. Green couldn't haul it in. 93 and Blue has been all over the place, both in terms of making tackles and deflecting balls. Look at the left-hand side. Uh, I believe it is Combs from his right-end position. Gets just enough of it to deflect it where it's not catchable. Well, this kid was advertised as one of the better in the league, and he has not disappointed. So Busby's back at quarterback. Florida State so worried about 93 and blue that they, in the game plan, had the tight end helping out on blocking a lot. And that's the reason why we haven't seen Florida State's tight end that active. Three men pursuit. Busby gets it away somehow. And they sent him off from the outsides that time. And the Florida State offensive line and the help from the backs unable to do anything about it. There is a flag down on the field. Good pressure by Duke, and somehow Busby gets out. But Florida State, I believe Damian Harold is going to be flagged with offensive pass interference. Preliminary signal there from Robin Wood. Number 51 in white for Florida State, the center, Kevin Long. Sometimes you do anything you can to keep your man from getting to the quarterback, even if it involves a WWF knockdown or takedown. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, Busby just got the head ducked under the way and avoided a big collision with the pursuing defensive back of Duke. You know, it used to be, Mike, that your center was about 6'1", 225, 230 pounds because he, he had to be very active. Kevin Long is 6'5", 290, probably 300. Unbelievable. And he's a good average size of any of the better centers in the nation. And he's the senior and the stalwart. Lots of time again. Intercepted by Stallmeyer. Stallmeyer falls down at the 11-yard line, but Busby picked off, and Duke has the football deep inside Florida State territory. Stallmeyer's 
statistics coming in tonight's ball game pretty impressive. Second on the team, 61 tackles, five for a loss, two sacks, one fumble recovery, five pressures, and now he adds an INT, a pick. A ball Busby should not have thrown. And Thad's got to see this guy. Throwing a slap pattern, and, and Stallworth right there in the middle. Stallmeyer, rather. Thad's got to be able to see that and either bring the ball back down or just throw it high and get, a, get throw it away. Fifth interception thrown on the season by Thad Busby. He had only six touchdown passes coming in to tonight's contest. Excellent field position, first and goal from the 10-yard line. Intended for Dupree, it goes incomplete. Unlike that, who's a little bit confused or a little bit down, we keep seeing Thompson, Kevin Thompson, regaining his confidence. You can just tell, Mike, as you look at him, a little more authoritative in the huddle, getting a little better feel for things, executing just a little better as he continues his maturation process. On second down, Thompson, and the football off. And it is back to about the initial line of scrimmage. Epperson was the ball carrier. He was enveloped by Larry Smith. One of those pleasant surprises with help from Shevin Smith. She Shevin, like Andre Wadsworth, former walk-ons. Now in starting roles, full scholarship at Florida State University. Not just starters, they are stars. And that's great to see. Third quarter has come to an end. And Duke once again in a dangerous position if you're a seminal fan trying to score their fourth touchdown of the night. It's 48-21 after three quarters on Sunshine. Well, last week... Florida State shut out Miami for the first time since 64, but Duke looking to score some points here tonight. They've already scored 21 against this defense. They can actually get a first down. The ball was spotted just inches behind the 10, so it's third and 10 from just shy of the 11-yard line. But they'll probably look end zone. Thompson keeps it himself, and he will be stopped well short of the first down yardage needed. Troy Saunders able to make the stop. Let's check back downstairs with Tom. Thanks, Mike. You know, you were talking about the shutout last week against Miami. Florida State's defense came in this week thinking they could get a shutout. Well, far from it. They've given up 21 points. Granted, the offense hasn't helped them, but Mickey Andrews has had to play a lot of his first teamers a lot longer than he thought he would have to or than he expected to coming into this game. Already given up three touchdowns, Mike. Len Hart sailed on a 52-yard field goal attempt earlier in the contest. This one should be about a chip shot for him from 26 yards out. And the kick is good for Sims Lenhardt, the top place kicker in the ACC. And now it is 24 points scored by the Duke Blue Devils here tonight at home against Florida State's top-ranked defense in the nation. Lenhardt with the game winner versus Army earlier this year. Kicked the field goal with a minute 17 left to give Duke the win. Very accurate. Just a little short on his earlier kick from 52. You know, Tom Block brings up an interesting point about Mickey Andrews and the defense. And if you start looking at the first four games of the season, Florida State gave up only a touchdown against USC, only a touchdown against Maryland. They shut out Miami. They did give up 28 points, though, against Clemson and 24 here tonight against Duke. Don't forget, Sunshine brings you the Bobby Bowden call-in show. That's Friday nights at 11 p.m. That's when you can join Coach Bowden as he reviews the season and takes calls from lots of Seminole fans and viewers all over our Sunshine Network audience. That's the Bobby Bowden call-in show Friday night at 11 on Sunshine Network. You are correct, and as Coach Bowden and his staff meets uh, over the next couple of days and starts preparing for next week, they will look back at this game, and the one thing they'll remember is we've got to correct the mental mistakes. Florida State, candidly, Mike, not prepared to play, despite the coach's best efforts, and championship teams cannot do that. You get that feeling, that's what he's saying to his coaches and himself right now. If you didn't see the scoreboard and you just saw that shot of the coach, you'd think we had a very, very tightly contested contest, wouldn't you? 
Instead, Florida State has doubled Duke's output. But Duke's output is 24 points. Low driving kick in and out of the hands of Todd Fryer. And the Seminoles will end up with decent field position out of the whole thing. There's this defense had come in top ranked in the nation, allowing just 20 yards per game rushing, allowing 186 total yards per game. Coach Bowden, quite a stickler for doing things correctly. In other words, if you're playing an overmanned or an outman ball club, you've got to do things correctly. You've got to execute. You've got to hold the penalties down. You've got to eliminate the mental mistakes. He will be just as aggravated, candidly, about this ball game as he would have been lost 10 to 9. Mm -hmm. Busby back at quarterback. And a great defensive play made by Tawambi Settles. He jumped in front of E.G. Green and broke up the attempted pass. Settles has been very active here in the second half. He's the senior back there, starting with three sophomores. As we indicated earlier, moved from the safety position in the final ball game of the 96 campaign and has been in the corner position all of spring, fall, and the 97 season. Six straight incompletions for Busby and a fine play a moment ago by Settles. Now Busby again rolls towards the right and that will be the seventh straight incompletion for Florida State and Thad Busby. Plus there was the interception in there to add to it. Florida State confused right now. Not executing well at all. Through four games Busby had begun putting on the types of things that we look to when we look at people like Danny Cannell and Charlie Ward. Now here are the three senior quarterbacks after serving a June year, two or three years of apprenticeship. Thad Busby in percent of completion, seeing ahead in yards, but look at the TD interception ratio. Mm -hmm. Good decisions, sometimes just not throwing the ball correctly or throwing it poorly. Busby again, this time his receiver was wide open. But Eric Jones was there to haul him down. The catch made by E.G. Green, and that will be short of a first down, and Florida State will be forced to punt. Again, Duke coming with pressure, Ernie having to break off his route in order to pick up the blitz package, but he's not downfield enough, cannot shake the tackler, can't complete the first down. Defensive coordinator Bob Trott for the Duke Blue Devils is coming with pressure the entire second half. Eric Jones there to make the tackle for some Florida State to punt. Ertel Lack at the 15. And the Seminoles right there to make the special teams play. Lavernius Coles was one of the guys there. Thad Busby, you saw the numbers through the four games compared to some of the all-time greats. And you have to remember he's thrown his fifth interception here in this evening's game. And that led to a Duke score. I'm talking with Mark Rick, I, I asked him, you know, did you see a little bit of a spark? That's been the knock on Thad. He's very mechanical. He doesn't do anything to get you beat, but maybe can't do the things to win for you. He said, you know, against Miami, I thought I did. I thought I saw Thad, you know, finally getting a little glimmer in his eye, a little, little uh, step on doing things, uh, you know, aggressively. I'm not so sure that's carried over into the night's contest by any stretch. Well, despite some of the criticism which he has taken, some fair, some unfair, he's still 14-1 and one as a starter. He'll be 15-1 and one after tonight. Not bad numbers. I was going to say, you know, you have to admit how spoiled are you that if you're right. a Florida State fan when you can be that critical. Uh, it's truly an amazing record he has as a starter. It certainly is. 24-point advantage for the Seminoles. A timeout called by Florida State. So Duke will start with just over 13 minutes remaining from their own 16-yard line. As good coverage on the punt a moment ago, and Erdel Lack with virtually no return. They hand the football up off the middle, and they'll gain two, maybe three yards on the play. The average SAT score is 1,100 here at Duke University. That's good. Well, Duke has won the CFA. Uh, award for academics for the fifth straight year. They graduated 24 of the 24 freshmen that came in five years ago. Wow. And they've graduated 217 of 224 since 1988. That's awesome. In pursuit of Thompson. 
And he gets back to the initial line of scrimmage. Well, you don't have to be a genius, as they are here at Duke University, to figure out that the number one team in the nation is in big trouble. LSU has just scored twice in a matter of moments, and they lead 28-14 in the fourth quarter against the defending national champion, Florida Gators. Down in uh, Death Valley, two. Man, Clemson will, will concede as Death Valley one, but LSU at night is a terrible, terrible place to play a football game if you're the opponent. Third and eight from the 18. Pressure again. Thompson just able to get the football away, and Duke will punt. Mickey well, they brought him all that time. Mickey Andrews countering. Mickey Andrews countering Bob Trott. He's coming with pressure. Watch it right up the middle. Bush comes. Scott Free from the right and the left side. Shevin Smith from his safety position. Thompson gets the ball away, but not before he's able to set and get it downfield enough. Jerry Johnson, Andre Wadsworth, Tony Bryant. Shall we go on? Quick, big, strong, dangerous. And trouble again. Flags on the field, and Morton not able to get the kick away. There was pressure immediately off the snap. Morton tried to eat the football, and Bobby Rhodes was in to make the tackle at about the two-yard line. We're going to call offsides on Florida State. Typically, in a situation like that, you've lined up offsides. Maybe that's why Deion Humphrey and teammates were there so quickly. Again, a mental mistake. Fortunately for Florida State, that five yards is not enough to give them a first down. Again, did not did not look like there was movement. That lends uh, and leads me rather to believe that someone lined up offsides. Hmm. Morton's numbers, a 52-yarder, just over 40 yards per kick, sixth of the night. He's already had one block, though. They'll get another chance here to attempt to get this one away. And he does cleanly. Fielded by Warwick at the 44. Cuts back towards the near side. Warwick trying to use his speed around the outside. There was good pursuit there by Kranzo. He ran him down. And a 32-yard kick Peter with about Warwick. a 10-yard return for Peter Warwick. Angle will always compensate for speed. Crandall with an excellent pursuit angle, and Peter's just not able to outrun it. Florida State did go with the return that time versus the pressure of the punt earlier, which they were offsides. This Florida State offense has not been productive here in the last uh, second half, rather. 11-14 remaining in the fourth quarter. 48-24, and movement again. Another flag. Could we have another offsides? The answer is yes. Tom Block. Well, Mike, you know, Trey Thomas came off on the side of the field, and he said what the Duke defense is doing. The Duke defensive line is yelling hike throughout the game. Now, you can't do that, but the reps apparently can't hear it. So they've been doing that throughout the game, and Florida State has fallen for it because they've been guilty several times of being offsides on offense. Hmm. Refs don't hear Duke yelling hike. We can't hear the refs, and it has contributed to many flags. Busby going up top. Warwick in a foot race. What a great catch by Peter Warwick. Looking over his shoulder, cutting back with Grant draped right on him. What a great adjustment. I would venture to say, if you ask Thad Busby, he knew he had good inside coverage. He intentionally threw the ball over the outside. Warwick with the great vision, able to swivel his head around 180 degrees, right over his left shoulder, back to his right shoulder. Excellent air on this pass. Nose comes over. Watch Warwick lay out for the catch. Well, maybe there are those that would say it wasn't a catch. Nonetheless, it'll stick as a 23-yard gain, and the football now at the 28 of the Blue Devils. Warwick, 125 yards in receptions on the night on five catches. Now he's looking towards the end zone, and number eight, Damian Harrell, 
And the pass forced him out of bounds. Good coverage on the play by Eric Jones. Florida State airing it out a little bit here in this drive. In, in some ways, I would venture to say, Keith, this has been a victory for Duke. Their offense has done some things right. Campbell hasn't looked bad, uh, or didn't look bad when he was in. Thompson hasn't looked bad, and the defense has done some decent things against Florida State. I think though you're two and four, Fred Goldsmith and his group will be happy with their performance tonight. Not necessarily the outcome, right, but their performance. And that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to come in, score some points, minimize errors, and get these young players who are young and experienced because they all played last year as freshmen, believe it or not, some more experiences against a team like Florida State, which is different than experiences against a team from just down the road that isn't so Without powerful. Without question, when you look at this Duke ball club, you've got nine returners on offense, nine returners on defense, and one of your two kickers. They're young still, but they're young kids with experience, and this situation only helps them. They try to blitz. Sabunaway couldn't make the tackle on Travis Miner, but he is going to be short of the first down on the third down in seven attempts. Ryan Stallmeyer continuing to pile up the statistics tonight. Well, now Coach Bowden has a decision. It's fourth and about three. Do you kick it or do you go for it? Looks to me like the kicking team is making its way to the field. So Sebastian Janikowski will attempt his first field goal of the night. Five for seven on the season. His longest of the year, a 49-yarder. The kick is up. Oh, my goodness. It is no good. Janikowski last week missed from 48 and 38, and he misses that one. So Janikowski misses the 38-yard attempt. 9.15 now left in the game. They give it to Montgomery. And he has absolutely nowhere to go. On the near side of the field, five white jerseys converge on Scotty Montgomery after the dump-off pass from Kevin Thompson. Trying, trying to find every way to get the ball in Montgomery's hands. On a fake inside and just throw it down there. Montgomery's going to have dropped about three steps back. The Florida State all over him. Montgomery with nowhere to go. First there on the spot, number 46, Abdul Howard, and then about five others. So from the shotgun, they give the football to Dwayne Epperson. Epperson's earned himself some carries here in the second half on that second and 16. He gets just a couple. Well, we have not heard a lot from Latavius Wilkes. We've seen Epperson in the football game a lot. The entire second half leads us to believe that maybe Wilkes has gotten banged up or strained something. Epperson doing a good job with the playing time he's getting. See big number 56 there, Alton Smithwick and company. So it's a very long third and 16 here. Florida State coming. And incomplete intended receiver was Corey Thomas. Florida State in the zone coverage and Shevin Smith was right around the football. The fourth candidate, the former walk-on, the senior, Shevin Smith. Big interception last week against Miami. Had actually scored in the 96 Miami contest on an interception. Almost scored last week in Tallahassee. Knocked out about the one or the two yard line. Yeah, this defensive backfield has been quite opportunistic the last couple of weeks. Morton gets the kick away. Warwick. At the 45, a couple of good blocks. Two Duke players down hard. And Warwick back just inside or close to Duke territory. Matt DiOrio makes the stop for Duke. A 37-yard kick, about a 10-yard return. And once again, flags on the play. Suspect we've got holding here. Florida State again coming with their pressure. The Zebras conferring. <laughs> so much holding, we'll wave it off. Well, 
on this little two-game winning streak for Duke at Wallace Wade Stadium will come to an end tonight. They beat both Army and Navy here. Next up for the Duke Blue Devils will be Virginia. And we're talking about all the quarterback problems. I guess the one good thing is at Duke, a lot of the alumni are doctors, so they can help to heal those injuries. In fact, Bob Trout said to us that he is sometimes very careful to yell at his players because you never know in 10 years which one of his former players will be performing surgery on him. And you do not want to have that particular man mad at you. Warwick's going to get a return on now. Warwick at midfield. And he's dragged down three yards later. Ryan Jenkins, the junior from Atlanta, after a 33-yard kick for Brian Morton. Talk about, Mike, when you, you consider winning here at uh, Wallace Wade Stadium. The stadium built in 1929. That's right. Duke has about 190, 193, 94 victories in this stadium. 58 of them via the shutout. One out of every four times they win in this stadium for the last 70 years or so is a shutout. Is that right? Not tonight. Busby. Oh, all kinds of time for Thad Busby. Now first out of the pocket. You know, there has to be something said for the play of the defensive backs by Duke tonight because on numerous occasions, Busby has been standing in the pocket all alone and has had nowhere to go. Well, Bob Trott, the defensive coordinator for Duke, has done a great job. He's either come with, you know, he runs a 3-4. He's either come with his three down linemen and sent eight back, or he's brought enough pressure to force Florida State to go to their bit blitz pickups. In that particular occasion, three rushing, eight back, settles not the least of them. Good coverage, Busby has nowhere to go, has to pull it down and run. Grant, Jones, Clark, the most depth at the defensive back position for Duke maybe in the last decade. And they have shown a good performance here tonight. Busby, pursued hard, dumps it up towards Green. He hauls it in at the 20. Settles was there, but Green makes the great effort to bring in the reception. Busby with a good job of just kind of hanging back and getting that ball up where Ernie can get down to it. Duke coming with seven. Darius Three Clark was all over. Darius Clark actually hurdles the offensive back in order to get there. Nonetheless, a 34-yard gain, Keith. And that's picking up the blitz package. If you're going to come at it, and Trot knows this, you've got to be willing to gamble. Second reception of the night for E.G. Green. You know what those whistles mean. Now back to Wallace Wade Stadium for a second. They also this year have put in a new Bermuda surface with a 12 inch laser produced crown with drainage system that has miles of plastic pipes. This Duke Wallace Wade Stadium so famous with the new turf. Of course, they've got many analytical people here in the area that have given them a state-of-the-art facility, and the turf looks great. And there is one other tidbit about Wallace Wade, and we'll get to that in just a second. It has to do with the Big Ten and the Pac-10. First and 15 from the 23-yard line. 18 flags thrown tonight against the Seminoles. Busby. And that is well incomplete. For more on that, let's check in with Tom Block. Well, talking about Wallace Wade Stadium, guys, in 1942, they actually played the Rose Bowl right here in Durham, North Carolina. The reason being Pearl Harbor and the situation there. They didn't want to have large gatherings on the West Coast, so they moved east, and it's the only time the Rose Bowl has ever pl been played in a stadium other than the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. 1942, the Rose Bowl right here at Wallace Wade Stadium. Mike? Now Duke would like to return themselves to a bowl game at some point, Tom. There is no question. And when you look at the improvement of this team, and they've shown some of it tonight, and the youth, maybe it won't be that far away. On second and 15, the football stays on the ground. Travis Miner does not get back 
even to the initial line of scrimmage. Mike Duke has 11 people on the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. They're not bringing seven. They're not bringing eight. Nine or ten. Eleven people on the line of scrimmage. Even the corners walked up tight. So a third and 14 from the 22 on the clock ticking down. Six minutes and 25 seconds. Look at the 11 blue jerseys. Busby will throw. Man-on-man -man coverage. Warwick in and out of his hands. We're going to have a pass interference called against Lamar Grant. And Busby gets up with a bit of a limp. He's taken some hits. He has stood in there almost fearlessly, delivered the ball against this pressure, especially in the second half. Very nearly hooks up with Peter Warwick. Pass interference, 10-yard penalty, automatic first down. Watch it coming right at you. He stands in there, delivers the ball, takes the hit. Warwick almost makes the catch. In and out. See the flag early. As we mentioned, Busby has taken a beating here in the second half. Chris Ruzik, number 96, gets right underneath him from his tackle position. Bad, not the most uh, agile getting up and moving around right now. Well, Chris Ruzik, the man who put the hit on him, is a guy who's somewhat limited in his ability to play right now. He had off-season back surgery, a laser surgery. Ironically, he's enjoying his 22nd birthday today. So the coaches have to be very careful about how much they use him in what situations. But when he's been in the game tonight, we've called his name out a few times. Chris Ruzik, the junior. Busby looking towards the end zone. E.G. Green in and out of his hands. Almost hauled in the touchdown with the dive. Ernie will be disappointed in that. He knows he can make that catch and oftentimes does. Good job. Yep, still yours. Watch it on the right-hand side of your screen. Busby with a quick drop. Just get the ball up and get some air under it. E.G. gets his hands on it. He's just not able to corral it. Seven, eight times out of ten, Mike, he makes that catch. So Marvin Minnis now on the near side and Harrell on the far side. The handoff, it was a third, or pardon me, second and seven, and William McCray, the freshman from Jacksonville, gets his first carry of the night. Just his fourth carry of the season, had seven total yards coming into the night. William McCray from the number three fullback position. Six foot, 215 pound freshman. And a timeout called by the Seminoles. And they're just shy of the first down yardage needed. Duke Athletics and Duke University stores have joined together to make commemorative pieces of the game and the floor. And we will step away as Florida State leads 48 to 24, 544 remaining. Welcome back to Wallace Wade Stadium here in Durham, North Carolina. Florida State did most of their scoring of points in the first half. And E.G. Green almost gave the Seminoles over 50 points production with an attempted touchdown catch a moment ago. Down in Baton Rouge, what a job Jerry DiNardo has done. Coming from Vanderbilt to LSU. But the Gators have scored and pulled it within seven with under five minutes remaining. Third and goal from the three. Busby. And Green can't haul it in. Covered tightly on the play by Lamar Grant. And it is fourth down. That's a little design pattern, Mike, where they it's not really a fade. They just get the ball out there in kind of a flux situation and let the receiver fight for it. That time Ernie gets his hands on it, but also at the for the second time unable to bring it in. Florida State's going to have to settle for the field goal attempt. Sebastian Janikowski. This from just about 20 yards out. And that kick is up and good. So Janikowski, it's his first field goal of the night, and it is 51-24 Seminoles. Janikowski missed earlier this evening from 38. 
Well, in ACC games since 1992, the Knolls have averaged 43 points a contest and an average margin of victory of 31 points. Of course, they've lost only one time in 42 conference games. And again, they'll be near those numbers tonight. Also near the numbers in which they have dominated Duke in the five games in which they have met previously. Florida State averaging a little over 53 points in each of those five contests, but only giving up about 13 and a half. Tonight, that almost doubled at 24. Coach Bowden, the only coach in NCAA history, Mike, with 10 consecutive 10-win seasons. Of course, that translates to Florida State. Florida State, the only school with 10 consecutive 10-win seasons. And as a result of that great success, the team has been ranked in the top four 10 straight seasons. Comparatively, Florida's done it only twice, and Ohio State and Arizona State once. So that is something to be said about the job that that man has done for a couple of decades in Tallahassee. Janikowski will put the ball in play. Just over five minutes now on the clock. Taken at the two-yard line. That's Dwayne Epperson. Epperson back to the 19. So a return of 17 yards on the play as Tommy Pauley came in on the special teams and made the stop. Florida State doing a little better job on kickoff returns. Of course, they had nowhere to go but better. You know, we've kickoff talked a lot coming, rather. about Keith, about how tough it has been for Duke to play there. They're out, man. They don't have the talent. They don't have the speed. But how tough is it for Florida State to play against a team which they know doesn't have the ingredients that should lead to any type of success against them. As you see the series notes there, it's not been a surprise in the five prior contests. How hard is it? It doesn't matter. Championship teams have to find a way to make it happen. Up top, looking for Montgomery incomplete. Okay, that's your answer. As a coach, though, it doesn't matter. How about when you were back in the uniform as a player? Did you or were you able to have that same maturity and that same attitude at that point? Well, our, our group, I think, did, especially the 80 group. And, and we did that by uh, focusing on one thing. We wanted to be the number one team in the country against the score. And so it didn't matter anything else that was happening. We needed to keep the opponent out of the end zone, and we finished the year. Number right. one in the country against the score. So maybe you break it down into a smaller thing on either side of the ball. But nevertheless, you have to make it happen. Well, here he is making it happen. Lane Marshall broke a couple of tackles all the way down to the 23-yard line of Florida State. My goodness. Finally hauled down by Cleveland Thomas, the freshman from Miami. A 59-yard run for the senior Lay Marshall. Florida State countering everything that Duke is doing, putting a lot of people up front. And if you get a little scrape and a little missed tackle, it springs wide open. You see Marshall at 5'11", 225 pounds, moving downfield in hot pursuit. Number 99 for Florida State, David Warren. And successfully catches him, but not before almost 60 yards of uh, Wallace Wade real estate is eaten up. So all the way down to the 23-yard line of the Seminoles. Thompson hands it off again. They go right up the middle. The Wood Rashid. A true fullback that we talked about earlier, who has really kind of de-seeded the senior Lay Marshall, who was the 95 top rusher. And here comes Terrence Dupree, who had the touchdown reception earlier. And again, you have to also go back to your earlier comment, Mike, about you know how how big of a, if you will, moral victory is this? You know, Duke has kept coming back. Here we are with four minutes left here in the fourth quarter, and they're knocking on the door again. They haven't quit. Florida State overloading the box again, and another flag thrown down. Rashid looked like he might have moved. You know, it's funny, I guess if, if you and I would have discussed earlier today the potential outcome of this game, and I told you Duke would score 24 or 31 points, you probably would have told me I was crazy. No way, if you look on paper and you look on film, you see this happening. You expect Florida State to score 50 or better. They've got 51. The defense lacking intensity, a little bit of focus, and Duke uh, successfully 
working on the things that will make them a better ball club. You know, they went 0-11 last year, but the one thing they said about this club is they never quit. They never quit. You got 18 of those 22 coming back. Corey Thomas in motion towards the left side. Pressure again. And Thompson will be sacked. Tommy Pauley and Andrews Bell both in on the play. Florida State going with their twos and threes. Tommy Pauley from his linebacker position. He's a 6'5", 233-pound freshman out of Baltimore. Watch him come from the left-hand side. He comes free. Thompson nowhere to go. That 58 looks a little familiar in there, too. It's not Bulware. It's Reynolds. So third and 17 from the 30-yard line. A give to Rashid. And this will be a field goal attempt coming up as Polly makes the stop again. Tom. You guys talking about Tommy Polly. You know, when he came to Florida State, he was a two-sport star. He played at Dunbar High School in Baltimore, which, as you know, has a tremendous basketball program. He came to Florida State, was going to try and play both sports. As it turned out, he decided to drop basketball, just concentrating on football. I'd say he's got a future there with his size. Yeah, you got that right. Thank you, Tom. Sims Lenhart for the field goal attempt of 43 yards. Off the hold by the tight end, Jeff Hodrick. Lenhart, the kick is up, and it is good. So Duke has scored 27 points on the night. Of course, Dunbar High School in Maryland is where Alonzo Mourning played before he went collegiately to Georgetown. And now, of course, you will see him featured all season long on Sunshine Network in our presentations of Miami Heat basketball. And just changing gears for a second with Scotty Pippen hurt in Chicago. Rodman just getting signed. And the Bulls always getting older. But basically with Rodman out of the lineup, the Miami Heat, of course, had a great season one year ago. And they will be fun to watch, as will the Orlando Magic all upcoming basketball season right here where we play your game on Sunshine Network. There are certain coaches, Mike, no matter where they go, mm -hmm. they bring an aura with you. And you take Pat Riley uh -huh. and put him anywhere. And it just kind of comes to the top, and everybody starts shining. And how long will it take for Chuck Daly's effect to be felt in Central Florida? Last time I checked, they both had championship rings. And uh, had a couple of three. Uh -huh. Well, as we are getting set for the kickoff, it is a final. LSU has defeated the Florida Gators 28-21. Tom Block, what do you think of that? Well, I tell you what, the FSU fans on hand are excited about it, but when the scores were announced by the public address announcer when LSU was winning 28-14, some of the FSU players showed some emotion, clapped a little high five. The FSU coaching staff went berserk on these guys, and I think that all ties into FSU's lack of focus a little bit and the performance they've put on the field tonight against Duke. Guys? Well, I'll tell you, Tom, it's still a monumental win for LSU. And it will tighten up that SEC race. So take a look at the AP Top Ten coming into this weekend of college football action. Florida has lost. Penn State fought off a very pesky Ohio State team up at Happy Valley. Nebraska winner. Florida State will win. And that will set up potentially an undefeated matchup in a couple of weeks against North Carolina. Michigan looked very good against Northwestern. Auburn, Tennessee, and Washington all victorious in the AP Top Ten rankings. So who will be the new number one? It'll be the Nittany Lions of Penn State. But the question that begs are asking is how far will Florida drop? North Carolina did win, but didn't win decisively. Florida State struggling a little bit on the defensive side of the ball. That'll be an interesting uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. Absolutely. Which is what makes this such a great sport. Another penalty, believe it or not. I'll tell you what, there are some players out on the field that are tired, but if there is one man whose right arm is absolutely worn out this evening, it is referee Robin Woods, because he has been a busy, busy man. Ice that arm later, Robin. Passes up and incomplete. And look at this. Lamar Grant pass interference.
Grant head up. Duke coming with that pressure defense again. He's going to get flagged. Ten and a first down. Kendra in trying to get the ball downfield. See, I, I got to tell you, Mike, I don't agree with this call because they're supposed to use some judgment about whether the ball was catchable. That ball's so far underthrown, nobody can get back to it. You're a safety, though, too. You stick up for the DB still, partner? Uh, only when they're correct. <laughs> Kendra trying to go with the same play, and this time the pass is complete. Good catch made by Jermaine Stringer. A little sophomore from Atlanta and a big game for the Seminoles. 35-yard reception, Kendra with his longest completion of the night to Stringer. Stringer with just three catches coming into the night's contest. A sophomore out of Atlanta. There you see his numbers, 5'11", 185. He said he's got that great speed, but his hands need improving. That was a good catch under pressure from Lamar Grant that time. So now the ball spotted on the 38-yard line. Clock is running. And up the middle towards the yardage needed for another first down. The ball carrier is William McCray, the freshman from Jacksonville. A gain of about 10 or 11. And with the spot, it looks like it will be another Florida State first down. Opportunity here for Kendra to exercise a little bit of his uh, maturity and clock management. Real game situation. Clock running now with a minute 17 remaining in the fourth quarter. Poles and Minnis are the wideouts. Both to the left side. The pitch. And the ball carrier was number 20, Vanez Gooch. And Gooch gets about eight yards brought down on the play just around the 20-yard line. You notice Danny turns the wrong way on this pitch. It's not a clean play, not executed well. Gooch does a good job of getting upfield and turning it in into positive yardage, but Kendra will in out the wrong direction. So that will be second down and three with 34 seconds remaining in the game and the clock running. The pitch again. This is Gooch, the ball carrier, and he will be just shy of the first down, a gain of about two yards on the second and three, and it should bring up a third and one, dependent, of course, on the spot. may have seen our last play of the game. Yep, guys are putting everything away. This one is in the books. The Florida State Seminoles have defeated the Duke Blue Devils 51 to 27. And they start out 5-0 for the sixth time under Bobby Bowden. They'll step aside, come back, wrap things up. Here from Wallace Wade Stadium, Florida State wins big.